ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Back, back. Row Banter, your favorite casual hey. movie talk podcast. I am one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz, and on today's episode, it's it's finally here, boys. The one year entry pre list in review. Yeah, we're actually back this week. We're because actually we, yeah. back because we took a week off. Yeah, it, in all forms of the word back, both back row and back in the form of we've returned. We've returned. Yes, yes. Uh, we missed last week. We apologize. Some scheduling issues. Busy week that week. Some thing had some 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 wow. Some things happened. Some things happened. But we're here. We had to skip last week. Shit we apologize. Went down. We're Shit tired. Went we down. gave you fifty two weeks in a row, folks. Uh, we missed one week for we Black gave Friday. you fifty two <laughs> weeks in a row minus one week. minus one week. So Which makes fifty one. Yeah, we yeah. we thought we'd Everybody take a little time. For each episode, and as, you would have thought especially for the fact that that most of us have traveled in that time right. frame, yeah. and um, I moved twice in that time frame. Yeah. So we've all still got the streak going though. Yeah, we, know we haven't had to do one minus a. a, a a banterer yet true no 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 two banters off yeah yeah dedication you love to see it joining me today of course is barn dance nathaniel nathaniel gingrich what up i'm barn dance nathaniel how was barn dancing last night uh it was good yeah yeah so when um when god made me okay uh <laughs> take me through this process when, when he was deciding nathaniel when you get intoxicated what how how will you express yourself? Are you going to be an angry drunk? Or are mm. you going to be a you know a very happy drunk? Sure. And I'm very very lucky in that he made me a happy drunk. Yes. But he also made me a dancer. Ah, and so, that's a great combination <laughs> for a party. Yeah. No. It's yeah. And yeah, you know no, I, that's I, a bonus. I, I've 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 lived with it for many many years. Uh, you know upon discovering it I, as soon as I turned 21. Um, but God made me a dancer. <laughs> and yeah. And. Uh, I, I, I got down, and that's a, there's no there's no two way about it. Hey, that ain't nothing wrong about it. That's a good time, especially for a barn dance. That's a perfect setting. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Exactly. So sounds I'm like a good. Pretty night. sure I'd like tore my meniscus in my yeah. knee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but maybe uh, it's not all good then. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it'll heal. It's fine. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. It was a great time. Uh, it was the first time I got to go. Uh. It, Tyler, I'm sure, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But it's a big thing in his community up in Woodstock. So, um, sure. last right. year was canceled, and so this year I wanted to definitely wanted to go and check it out. And it's a great time. Cool. Also joining me today is two turned Ty, Tyler Vidalis. I don't know if I was two turned. I've been pretty turned before, and. Yeah, from what I've heard, out of out of out of Tyler's turntness, this turntness. was this was a pretty this uh, is a mild turntness. This was a mild, mild year. Yeah. How many out of five stars? I'd say he, 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 he yeah he probably okay. peaked maybe at a three, but he Moderate. was keeping it peaking. Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Right, right. Yeah, responsible, he responsible turn there. tie. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't too turn. Yeah. He was responsible turn. How you doing, buddy? Good man. How are you? Pretty good. Your good, good, good talk. <laughs> it's not like we see, don't see each other like every day. Some bantering going early here. Yeah, some some great back row banter, and also joining in us and rounding out the squadron. Hey, it's Big Buck Blake, Blake Holder. Hey, what up? What up? Big Re- Bucks fan over there, huh? Uh, you know, for the time being, yes. For the time oh, being, I'm yeah. Sure that that's your team. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, I'm usually big on not supporting Wisconsin sports. Right? Yeah, that's like the Chicago in me. Yeah, I don't go Packers. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah it's Packers. not too many times you get to travel locally to a professional championship sporting event. Yeah, right? and you don't yeah. have to hop on a plane or do anything like that. So, so. did you catch a and game, I'm or you gonna, were you just at the in the like Buckville or whatever they call it? Uh, yeah, it's like a Deer District. So yeah, yeah Deer District. That's what that's what, what I'm calling. That's what I meant. Buckville, <laughs> Buckville, Deer uh, District. You know, <laughs> kind of same deal. Yeah, it's, it's, is that it's like a, a nice nickname area, or is it actually called there, that? It's actually called, uh, what, Deerville? Or Deer District. Deer District, sorry. Um, yeah. Did that come before or after the team was there? Oh, now that's, I would assume after. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So so it's like Wrigleyville. Basically. Yeah, that's so that's why I said Buckville. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where they, those it, kind so. of merged. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, cool. It was cool, man. So, yeah. We'll Buck, Bucks, Bucks are right? the team Buck I'm rooting for this finals. I wonder if they call, like, the Suns just space. 
the area around it. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking, you know, the suns. The what what else are you going to call it? The, the right. oven? <laughs> right. The thing on the jersey says the valley. So I don't know. Uh, well, yeah. I do like that. The happen. valley is just um, Phoenix in, in general <laughs> is, yeah. is in a valley. Yeah. And so you're either from like the East Valley or the West Valley, or I guess you can okay. go North Valley. But yeah, it's it's the the valley is the nice basin that, that Phoenix and the surrounding suburbs are in. Yeah. I love the NBA city jerseys. Oh, oh yeah. Sun jerseys are so dope in general. Yeah, the Suns jer- sun have good jerseys. Those black but, ones are awesome. But I feel like yeah. they've done a good job in the NBA. The MLB ones this year are overall not impressive. There are a few good ones. I think the Chicago White Sox ones are the As best. The Sox ones were dope, yeah. Yeah, the man. South Side ones are the best. As so. we've stated, the Diamondbacks are just either absolute fire or ice cold with yeah. their with their I like teams. the ones this year. Yeah, the Los Serpentinos. Yeah, I'm, The I'm, gold I'm, ones, they're yeah. sick. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of oh, down. I'm about to check it out right now. Yeah, the Diamond, I mean, the Diamondbacks, in my opinion, have, like, the coolest jerseys of all time in their classic ones, the purple. Sure, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, then they went to the red, and then they went to, like, this really weird red, gold, neon, blue like, thing that they yeah, had a couple of years ago. About. And now it's just insanity all the time. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, I see these gold ones. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. The, uh, the this, Serpientes. Th- yeah, or yeah, Serpientes yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think these they're cool. Dope. Those are this year's, uh, 2021? Yeah, so yeah. they did the city jerseys they have for, I think, three years now in the NBA. And Okay. Pivoting to the, back to the NBA, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so the then the MOB well. made a deal with Nike, and so when they did that, they wanted to introduce more city jer- They didn't want to do the same thing with the city jerseys. This is their first year doing it because their first year with Nike was or 2020 with the pandemic, so they didn't oh. do it. So this year is when they started doing it. And they only started with eight teams. I believe it's the Red Sox, White Sox, Cubs, Marlins, uh, Diamondbacks. I'm missing two. Maybe it was only six. Might be missing a couple. But Probably smart they didn't have to do, like, the Reds or something yeah, like that. Yeah. You know? like, well, the, the, well, next year they're going to do all 30. That's cool. Yeah, so next year Are every these, team will have one. Miami, the Miami ones are dope. What's that? The I like the Miami ones. Yeah, the Marlins. They're okay. Yeah, they're like they're not my, yeah, they're the red pinstripes yeah. with the, they're like blue yeah. pants, I think. I'm not the biggest fan, but a lot of people do like them. So, you know, take that for what it is. But um, I have the the Cubs City jersey hat now that I got for my birthday. So that's fun. I okay. like that a lot. Yeah. That's been it. Only one, only one jersey I care about. Oh God! Don't even say it. It's a Packers. This is green gold, baby. Uni talk. <laughs> this has been Uni talk on back row banter. Let's get into entry list talk, everybody. We're gonna do our entry list in review episode. Uh, this is going to be all of our personal list. We're gonna do. We said we're gonna do our top fifteen from the entry list and the bottom five. Doing all sixty and ranking them felt like it was gonna be. Long, monotonous, and not very entertaining. So we're kind of just going to go a little bit more in-depth in our top 15 thinking, a little bit more in-depth in our bottom five thinking. And then I have compiled a different version of the entropy list, everybody. It is according to the IMDB entropy list. And we're going to see how ours compares to the actual rankings from, you know, I would say we trust IMDB the most. That's what we do, what we do our, our tiebreakers with. So according to IMDB, how, how well did we compare to... The, the, IMDb list. the Boston ones are rough. I like Wikipedia. Oh, they're, I actually like them. They're they're the Boston Marathon themed ones. Oh, okay. Same scheme and, and stuff. Sorry. Back to Uni Talk Back, for a second. Uh, yeah, I was lost in Uni Talk you, there yeah, for a second. Yeah. But. Um, I like those. Right. Oh, but we'll I see. not I my like favorite. You. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, we're gonna go through. It's gonna be one of the loose episodes. A little loose, a little baby. Loose. Yeah, we're gonna also be releasing our Black Widow episode at the same time. Episode 62. The goose got me loose. Going up a strong. Goose Island? Yes. Are you in a dancing mood? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. I've been listening to a lot of Pixies recently. I've been, uh, been kind of, you know, missing my 90s grunge and uh, alternative music. So. Yeah. I heard Ska's back. Have you heard that? Cool. Yeah. Are you da- <laughs> Did you listen to Ska? Uh, yeah. I mean, a little bit. Obviously, little bit. you get like the... Like the uh, uh, like big, real big fish, or uh, mm-hmm. or like uh, you know, Sublime kind of dipped into there every now and then. I've heard of both those bands. Probably couldn't name a song, but the z- the uh, like, what, what was the one? Terry Poppin' Daddies and the Zoot Suit Riot. Oh jeez, <laughs> what a song name! 
All right. Well, that was the band name. <laughs> oh, that was the band name? I yeah. thought those were songs. <laughs> no, the Zoot Suit Riot is a song. Okay. The band's name was the Cherry Poppin' Daddies. That's a great name. I love that, actually. Uh, all right. Who wants to kick it off here with the personal list here? Nose goes. Ooh. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll they heard us. It. Blake's it's going in. It's been way better in person. We did uh, the nose guess. Oh, well. All right, Blake's going first. I'll let it rip. What All right. We doing top 15 here, fellas? You guys want to do bottom five first, or do you want to do top 15 first? I would say bottom five first, but it's up to you. You want to go okay. controversial? Bottom five. Bottom right. five. No, no surprise here. Yeah. An American Pickles 60. 60? <laughs> right. Okay, I, I figured. I figured. Um, 59, we're rocking the purge. Okay. Um, 58, Boondock Saints. Wow, that's lower than I expected on your list, but okay. I'm I'm not really I don't I don't what, not see that. On. Okay. Yeah, th- like I, I understand why. Okay. I'm scared um, for this one. So the fourth to the bottom, F nine, man. Oh, that low. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. low. That was okay. That was a hard time watching that year. Yeah, you um, were the lowest of it, uh, lowest of us yeah. on it. I guess that was our last movie review, or maybe two ago, but whatever it was. Um you were pretty low on it, and I was a little shocked. Yeah, man, I just ah, that one that was tough. Yeah, I it's it's not surprising <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, it's not surprising, it's like, but like it's uh, you know, it is a big call. We'll say it yeah. is a huge call. And then um, the least, what is I don't even know the correct word, fifth to last, least of the um, least, best of the worst. Be, yep, it's gonna be a uh, bo. Did you say bo rat? You cut out for a sec. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Or right. at subsequent movie film. Yes, sir. <sighs> yeah, I could have probably predicted f- every one of those except for F9. I remember okay. those are like the five that you were like, yeah. or four or five that you were like, yeah, this is just not me. <laughs> this is not <laughs> me at all. Um, Wonder Woman 1984 almost made that cut, mm. to be honest with mm. you guys. Was, right. that, uh, was that the bottom that's six? Good. Was that? Uh, yeah, that's six. Okay. Okay. So, fair, fair spot, I guess. Comments, rebuttals, questions. Uh, I'm really? getting up. Do no, we, do we want to go around first, and then and then. No, I, I we yeah, should take yeah. it. I feel like we should take it one at a time. I, uh, okay. not shocked. American Pickle for me. You'll see where we're some of mine. Not not the worst for me though. A little pre okay. pre uh, bit of sizzle, but you were that that was the one where you're like, dude, I almost turned this off. <laughs> like I yeah. did not want to watch this anymore. Um, and you were just not down for it, which is understandable. You know, I can totally see why, but for me, it just, it worked more than I think it did for you, for you. For sure. Yeah. Tyler, any big reactions to that bottom five there or any reflections? No, no, not really. You, you do you boo boo. And I'm totally, totally fine with what your list is. Fair. Mm. I like it. All right. Kick it off here with the top 15. Uh, I guess start at 15 okay. and, go, and go up, Should I would I say. Start at, okay, yeah, that's fair. So let me do this then. Let me get it in a better view. Uh, let's see. Tyler, Phil. Phil, Tyler. Um, If you put, like, Boston cream into <laughs> like a lawn john. Oh my god, that's, that's crazy! So I caught the list at fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's called filling. There we go. I see. There we go. <laughs> a little Not throwback. Not a fan of um of stuffed donuts. I don't know if we talked about that before on here. We, we did like last donuts. week or the week before. Yeah. Um, fifteen donuts. fellas. Uh, okay. Work room for a dream. Okay. That is uh, on our list. Where is that? That's like twelve. That's yeah, it's 16. falling a little that's bit. Right, no, okay. that takes your rose up a little bit. Oh, that's there you 16. go. Way yeah. to go, Requiem. Props. Okay. Gotcha. So okay, I may have just lost my space. Okay, fourteen. <laughs> Pan's labyrinth. Pan's labyrinth. Pan's labyrinth. Okay. I like that labyrinth. <laughs> labyrinth. Um. Fourteen. I, okay. Yeah. Go. Judas and the Black Messiah. You guys can stop me whenever you guys. Oh, want you're to good. Yeah, yeah. Just, we can just t- t- um, tap in anytime. I have Judas pretty high as well. We'll, yeah, we'll good see. Good movie, man. I yeah. talked about my dad to that the other day. Mm-hmm. I, I want to try to rewatch that. That's, yeah, that was a good one. That might be worth a. That's been yeah. six months now since it came out. Almost might be worth a rewatch mm-hmm. sometime. 
Uh, Definitely. I, I think we all the were pretty positive on that when it came out. Yeah. 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 We were. We were. I mean, it is. It's, it's up there on yeah, the list. Yeah. It's uh, thirteen. On, it's thirteen on the list. So. All right. What's the twelve uh, here, buddy? Twelve. Whiplash. Hey, uh, you'd love to see I mean, it. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that one, man. Yeah, that's 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 good. I'm glad I'm glad that made it on there because that was your first time watching, right? It was. It yeah. was. And after I watched it, I was able to read around. And obviously, it's sure. notoriously held pretty high from a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. It, it um, still holds up there as, as one of the better movies, I would say, in yeah. the last decade or so. What uh, is that, for, for a lot of people. Simmons? Yeah, it is J.K. Simmons. Yeah, J.K. Simmons, right? yeah, Miles yeah. Teller. He's awesome in that. Yeah. That, that's, I'm so glad you won the Oscar for that because that was incredible. Yeah, his Even performance is, is awesome. It's incredible. His performance in the Tomorrow War was sick. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I it, do like it too. It rivaled with Flash. Sure. I mean, genuinely, he's, my, that, he's the best part of that movie for me. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I would, I would agree. Still White Claws. All right, well, that was 12, right? Uh, Yep, yeah, right, 11. 11. Inception. Um, okay. Kind of self-explanatory. Yeah, you don't, don't need to say much more on that. Watch it anymore, but... Mm-hmm. So not the uh, inception, Nasty. not making the top 10. Interesting. No, it's not. It's not. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm really excited uh, to hear Blake's top 10 actually. Yeah. Bias, though, of course, this is, this is complete biased. Uh, oh yeah. We, oh, yeah. We, we're being open with this. Now. Yeah. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. 10. Um, I have paid in full. That's one of my sure. personal favorite movies. Sure. I'm not time. mad about that at all. Like even though um, it's lower on our entropy list and it's lower ish on, I mean, I still have it ranked yeah. decently high, but, um, that's still a really good movie. It, Totally cool having that in your top ten. Yeah, I'm not mad yeah. about that. I remember Nathaniel being a little bit higher on Boys in the Hood than that. Yeah, um, which I could see why, but uh, yeah, I think it's Payton Full is just a little bit more flashy. It seems a little bit more modern when I watch yeah. it. Yeah, and Payton Payton um, Full is actually yeah, it's below Boys in the Hood. It's my bad. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's fairly close though. Yeah, they are. Uh, They're pretty nine close. Um, Green Room. Shout out Nathaniel. Yeah, hey. I that movie when I first met him. Yeah, um, that, I think when I first met you, I think I watched it then. Yeah. So when we watched it for this podcast, that may have been second or third watch, um, and it's still intense as fuck. That's a great movie. Yeah, that is a. Real, I, that's one I would love to rewatch because it's also quick. It's like ninety yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, like an hour thirty, man. Yeah, yeah, it's an hour thirty. It's a, it's a little bite sized, just delicious snack, man. Down mean yeah. and nasty. That's like baby. that's like an appetizer you want to order for a meal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I do, right. I I just distinctly remember that being one of the movies where I walked out of it and just went. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm on sure. dry land again, and then I went and saw it again the next day. Like, I can't imagine seeing that in theaters. Right. That would have yeah. been an incredible experience. Dude, theaters, when so. the when the arm comes off, yeah, the, well, that, when the arm when I yeah. lost it. That when the arm gets hit, it's just it just takes a hard left and doesn't look back. Yeah, man, that, that knocks the movie up to another notch. So yeah, you, it cranks it up love, and you it stays there. Yeah, for for sure, Adam. And speaking of um movies, as you said, when it ends, you're finally it's like a sigh of relief. I have another movie like that on here. I'm sure you guys know what I'm hinting at. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a couple of them on here, actually. Yeah, we do. I do. Uh, eight, I have Get Out. Oh, okay. That's um, what I thought it was going to be. Love that one. Yeah, that's probably my my favorite uh, Jordan Peele movie so far. We'll see if Candyman can top that. Yeah. Um, well, but, uh, he he actually, he's no, only he's producing. Yeah, he's yeah, only producing right, that producing. one. Yeah, so yeah. I don't. I'd necessarily wouldn't mm-hmm. consider it a Jordan Peele movie, but uh, Jordan Peele still joint. attached. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, like that better than us. Um, I don't think we've done us on here. We haven't. We haven't. I I would agree with you. I think that's a lot better than us. But yeah. I think us is a little underrated. Maybe. Yeah, I think I've only seen it the once. On, I've um, also only seen it the once. I feel. I remember it got yeah, kind of mixed too. reviews. Some people really like it. That some was people one. Like it. I where like even me and my master's degree had to like go to, to the internet and be like, yeah. "What the fuck is sure. happening?" Yeah. I mean, if you look, <laughs> so, if you look into it, like what the I think yeah, there's some metaphor. Kind yeah, a hundred percent. But Get Out was just so Get Out was yeah. so incisive mm-hmm. and just so perfect. It, sure, it's yeah. it's like mm-hmm. a little. It's just a bullet, man. Yeah. And yeah, know, sure. And you know exactly what it is. And us. Yeah. was just so much more esoteric yeah that's yeah, it. definitely. Yeah. I, I think you get a little bit more replay replay value out of us uh get out that first viewing of get out like that's a yeah. crazy experience um yeah. so that's performance wise uh lupita nyango and us though is incredible mm. she's no, really good yeah yeah definitely she did she did awesome in that We'll probably get around um, to that someday. I would I would say maybe yeah, yeah. probably and daniel how do you pronounce it is it Kal- Kal- kaluya kaluya yeah gotcha so he's on here twice, obviously. Judas and Get Out. So yeah, he's on sure. There. Um, what is that? Six? I think I lost track. That of was uh, eight. Okay, so then seven here. We're going to be uh, Django. 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 That's mm. that's 
I expected that to be higher. Seven is actually a little yeah. lower than I thought. It is. That's man. number two on like, our entry um, list. Yeah, just to jump right into it, right above that's Kill Bill. I like Kill Bill a little bit more than that. I think I told you okay. guys. Okay. Probably my favorite. Yeah, I think you did. You know, movie. Um, specifically for Go Go, and that okay. two minute fight scene. Um, yeah, I feel like lately I have, I don't want to say soured on Django, but like I just don't love it as much as I did when it first came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the first time I saw it, I was like, this is awesome. And it's then like since so then, long, yeah, I think it's a movie, but it's so long. It's some of that. And then it's also like, I just, I think of like your, your Kill Bills or like even Inglorious, I think is just. Inglorious is, Inglorious and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood mm-hmm. are really go back and forth for me. Inglorious, I feel like is. Actually, you know, I can't even say that because I haven't rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was going to say Glorious Bastards has the better rewatch value, but I haven't sure. rewatched Once Upon a Holly- Once Upon a Time yet, so I mm. can't really say that. But I do, from what I, all the viewings I've had in Glorious Bastards, it's just like every time it does hit really well. Yeah, and and the, I, this I was haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, uh, Django was that was my first watch, and we watched it for the pod. So I didn't. Oh, know. that's true. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's 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 good. I like it. Um, I, to your point, in terms of *Inglorious Bastards* and *Once Upon a Time in Hollywood*, I call it *Once Upon a Time in Hollywood*. We didn't review it, but I watched that. I think after you and Nathaniel kind of co-signed. Yeah, it. I maybe, think you said you uh, got on like a voodoo sale or something. Yeah, yeah. that might have been. Man, I don't know. Maybe it was a few months January ago. January or yeah. so. Yeah, February. And I liked it. Um, I don't know if I put it up there in that top echelon of Tarantino. Sure. But uh, obviously, all his movies are self-explanatory, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So that was what Kill Bill was six, Django seven, Kill Bill six. Yep. Five is uh wait, hang on. Kill Bill Cody. Volume One. Sorry, I just want to pause. Kill Bill Volume One Correct. or two. Okay. Yes. Kill one, Bill okay. Volume One. Correct. Um above that, so five is Halloween, the original. Okay. Seventy eight. Sure. Um Classic. Right. I'm a yeah. huge horror guy. Um slashers, that's one of the most iconic slashers that starts all those films. Mm-hmm. Right. That's like the slasher uh, to start slashers. Right. That and Psycho, I'm glad that's so high up there for you. Psycho. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, what'd you say, Nathaniel? I said, I'm glad Halloween's that high up there for you. I, yeah, uh, man, and I, I didn't, I haven't sat and watched that whole first one, or I haven't sat mm-hmm. and watched the first one in its entirety in a very long time until we did it on the pod. Yeah. Before, yeah. It might have been for Halloween, funny enough. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, we did um, our double F on to release yeah. on Halloween. And it still holds up really well for like movies of to be dated that much in horror movies it's mm-hmm. like that's a tough feat especially it's so iconic too you know yeah yeah so uh iconic theme song um I should say score i should say <laughs> right correct um above that four uh finally got my boy danny v on here hey, prisoners. putting prisoners at four i figured um, that'd be up there for you you were you and yeah. nathaniel were and I guess all three yeah. of you, for the most part, but you and Nathaniel especially, were like so, so high. It's just an underrated. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, it is. Because I haven't really even heard of it that much before I really? we watched it. Yeah. That you was, guys brought um, it up, and I was like, which movie? For sure, man. Fun fact on Prisoners, that came out 2013. I think I mm-hmm. saw it about a year later or so. Sure. Um, then I caught it at home, watching it with my dad. It was like a very gloomy, rainy day outside. Ooh, so yeah. it fit the theme of the movie. Yeah. And that was like, from that day on, that was my favorite movie for a very long time. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, no, definitely a solid one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, above that, um, The Shining. So shout out Nathaniel. I knew he'd Ew. like that one up there. Sure. Um, what, what number that, is that? Obviously. That's three. Three. So okay. Top three. Top, top three. bronze top three. medal. Yeah. Bronze Times medal goes three. to The yeah. Shining. Um, what else can you say, right? Perfect score. I, we even like the Dr. Sleep from Mike Flanagan. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this, this is an older two though. What is this? Like 70 something? 80. 80. 79? Yeah, 1980. I want to say it's 80. You, you were yeah. probably right. I don't know why. Yeah, definitely 80. Um, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Still holds it well. Jack Nicholson. Um, phenomenal acting. Um, and then yeah. I started to appreciate it a little bit more after I watched Dr. Sleep and I'm able to kind of figure out like what the shine is. Sure. Never piece, you get books. some more backstory a little bit. In that right. Yeah. yeah. So then you start to piece together like what the shine is mm-hmm. and you start to realize like, what the hotel does to his mental mm-hmm. state and things of that nature. Um, and like, that's what made that jump up a little bit more to me. Um, and I knew that was obvious, obviously one of uh, Nathaniel's favorite movies on there. So, um, definitely wanted to, to get that on there. Um, two, number two, 
Hereditary. Hey, I, I had knew this had to be I up here. I wanted to put it at one, but it was gonna be <laughs> that was gonna be complete biased. Um, you hate. I would have hated. I would have hated want. myself for that. I um, wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel it was, like it yeah. was close. It was close, but yeah, this is uh, this is probably my favorite. Not probably. This is my favorite horror movie. Um, in the past, I don't know, maybe maybe ever, I would say. Really, an off, often using experience with this. Um, you think you're, this is your favorite horror movie ever? Is it? You're possibly, go, possibly. It's uh, okay. I mean, at least from from first watch. I would sure, say. sure. The first okay. watch when I walked out of that theater, I caught it by myself. Yeah. Um, opening night. At oh, like, okay. Dude, I would have lost my mind. Yeah, that would have been crazy. And that dude. was yeah. That was one of the most surreal movie experiences. Like, how that. did you so, like, sleep? I, I, was like, oh, I wouldn't I have. Did it. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I had, uh, we went on vacation the next day with my family, um, so we had to get on a flight like super early. So that's why I went. Mm. And I didn't. Sleep. I stayed up the whole night and hopped on a plane. That's, and I slept on the plane. That's crazy. But yeah, that, it was <laughs> where you know the ghosts can't movie. get you. Ghosts don't go in this guy. Um, yeah. yeah, little little peek behind or a bit of sizzle for for next week for what you're watching. I rewatched Midsummer. Last uh, Ooh, last week, I haven't rewatched that in a long time. Yeah. I think I last time I rewatched that may have been about Feb, right before the pandemic. So maybe February, okay. or early March of twenty twenty. I think I remember you saying that to me. I think I, was, yeah. I remember I was talking in the store right about that time. Yeah. Um, that was the first time I rewatched that. That's, yeah, how'd you how'd you feel about that? That was the second time I've seen it. The first time being uh, the other yeah. time being in the theater. Um, I liked it so much better the second time, and like I feel mm, like I caught okay. so much more too. Um, yeah. But yeah, I it, it, like and I liked it the first time too. Like I just really, really liked it uh, the second time. So mm-hmm. I'll Shout talk a little bit more. She's awesome. Yeah, she's incredible. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow for sure. Cool. Um. So yeah. So that's two. That's the range of emotions I went through watching that movie. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. That I remember watching that. Um. And immediately, I was like, "This is gonna be like a classic." And sure right. enough, it was. It told. I remember watching that, and telling a bunch of friends, "Like, you guys need to go see this movie." And it was very controversial because there's people to we kind of talked about it on that hereditary episode, um, where if you're not into like horror, you're watching that movie and you're like, this movie, I don't get it. Yeah, right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that kind of makes it a little bit more important to me. Sure. Because um, if you understand film and if you like film, like it's it's yeah. crazy, man. I remember when um, this movie came out, the my high school girlfriend, the girl I was dating at the time, she her parents watched it. I remember them. I heard heard great things online. Mm. Everyone I followed on Twitter, like all the people who like knew film decently, were mm. like, "Wow, incredible, incredible!" And they hated it. They were like, "Wow, we almost yeah. we almost turned it off. Can't believe we went to rented that movie. Awful movie. Don't watch it. Like all that stuff." Yeah. I was like, yeah. "Oh man, yeah. that's just." Why, why do you guys think that is? Why do you guys think that there's people who who obviously it's subjective, right? Art subjective. So oh, is yeah. music. Yeah. Oh, a ton of shit. Why do you guys think it is that that people don't gravitate towards that movie? They don't like it. I think it's miscommunication. I think at sure. the time, um, you know, it got so much hype about being so scary, and then it it, it is scary, but it's not scary in the tr- the way The Conjuring's a scary, sure, a you know, film. Uh, or anything like that. It, it uses the situation, or it uses the horror to to examine the emotions and 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 examine your emotions through horror rather than kind of mm-hmm. the flip thing. Um, flip side of things and you know it's like anything that folks don't go for i think um there's a certain amount of social contract you enter anytime you go into a theater of like this is what i'm expecting this is what's going to happen and if and Mm -hmm. if that's breached or anything like that audience is just it's unforgiving as soon as as soon as that suspension of disbelief is gone or that that it goes outside your comfort zone it's just pretty instantaneous yeah yeah fair um the number one, fellas, uh, Denny V again. I got a rival. There it one. is. And um, I should have given you like a drum would... roll. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll take it. We'll take it. That's the end of the list, right? So, number one, we got a rival. Um, probably my favorite Denny V movie. Um, I do like Sicario a lot, though. Different Ooh. type of movie. Ooh, that. Sicario um, is yeah. good. I do like Sicario a lot, and I don't know if any of you have it. It sounds like you guys have all seen it. Adam, have you seen I, it? I have not, actually, no. Oh, okay. Um, Maybe when we have to get on here. I was going to say, you hadn't seen any Denny V at the start of this podcast, I'd right? seen 2049. Okay. Uh, but I think okay. that's the only thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, uh, I, I got a rival at one. Um, Amy Adams does awesome in that movie, and, mm. and I kind of hopped on it last time we were talking about it, Tomorrow War. Um, just to have... 
a film with extraterrestrial creatures. Hey, spoilers for all these movies, by the way. Yeah, like yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah, been a year, folks. Yeah. It's been a year. You got, <laughs> sure. you got time. Um, just just to have that on film and it's not what we always see of like them being like vicious creatures and trying mm. to take over the world and harm humanity. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that just that goes so far. And the storytelling in that movie is is phenomenal, man. From the point where obviously we only know of flashbacks, right? That's how we live life as humans. You come to find out they're flash forwards, right? Because she's learning the language. Um, R.I.P. Um, Abbott <laughs> exploded. Yeah, that was crazy too. So yeah, it's a good movie, man. Yeah, I I love that movie. I remember I caught that. Uh, I don't think when it came out in theaters. Sure. Maybe about a year after, because that's 2016. Yeah, I caught that my senior year of college. I remember I was watching it um in my apartment. And I was like, oh, this is this is dope. I actually caught that in Sicario on the same day. Wow. Two for um Yeah. First time I saw Sicario too. So uh my dad told me to check out Sicario. Then I just kind of doing some research on Denny V. Watched that. Sicario. Um then the next day I watched Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, I see, I still movie. haven't seen that one. Some people argue that's yeah. his best. It's good. Strange. Very okay. strange. I, I've only seen it one time. And okay. This is four years ago. I should probably try to rewatch it. But Jake Gyllenhaal's awesome. Um, but yeah, very different kind of a tale of kind of like a weird body swap timeline type thing. Nice. Um, probably his most um, out there, if that's a word, right? Quote sure. unquote. That's probably his most out there film. Everything else seems a little bit more grounded. Have you ever seen uh, his first um, one? Mm-mm, what is it? Uh, it? I'm pretty sure it's it's a French one because he, he's Canadian. Uh, mm, no, I don't think so. I want to say it's called Incendies. Yeah. I think no, this is I, him. I yeah, so it's called Incendies. Incendies. I N C E N D I E S. Um, mm. Twins journey to the Middle East to discover their family history and fulfill their mother's last wishes. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I need to check this uh, out too. <laughs> it was the Academy Award nominee for Best Foreign Language Film, though. So. Is that 2010? Yep, I yep. see it on here on IMDb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might have to check it out. IMDb rating 8.3. Do we expect anything less from this guy? Probably nope. not. So, um, yeah, man, bottom five, top 10, top three to recap, uh, Arrival, Hereditary, Shining. So Dang. two horror movies in the top three, um, and then kind of a drama, I guess, how would, how would we classify Arrival? What is that, like a sci-fi. drama? A sci-fi. Drama, sci-fi. Sci-fi. Sci-fi yeah. drama. Drama, yeah. So, yeah. Sci-fi mindbender. It. An American pickle. Fuck that movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any big, uh, any big <laughs> risers that you had on? Yeah. There? Any any notable changes mm-hmm. in your list? Like you know, maybe uh, not the top fifteen or bottom, but like you know, one that's gonna yeah. jump up for sure. Um. Yeah, I got the descent at seventeen. Hey. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh. What what is that on our list? Let me see if I can pull up. It yeah, I got it right here. The thirty-seven. Yeah. So whole thirty sp- or twenty spots. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that killed me, dude. We watched <laughs> that and we put it down there. I was like, gee. Yeah, I agree, actually. We'll, um, uh, we'll only see more about that on my list later. But honestly, dude, it's it's below Tenet and then The Notebook and then Insidious. Like, it's not even that low. I don't know. Yeah, true. I mean, there, there are some good movies still in that. Like, in that Blind segment. Spotting's below it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But um, I think it's in a yeah, that's, good spot. That's weird. And that movie's scary too. Yeah. Like yes. those monsters are, we talked about that for a while. Yeah, not even just the monsters, um, just the, the setting, the, the tightness. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, claustrophobic. Yeah, claustrophobic. Yeah. claustrophobic. Uh, let me see what else I got in here. Um, high tension, obviously. I think high tension is what, like in our bottom yeah, six? Bottom five. Something. Um, yeah, fourth from the that, bottom. Yeah, I got that at 36. Yeah. So just kind of for an area for you guys, I got that at 36, um, below Halloween 2018, and above blind spotting. Okay. So damn, that's where big riser too. Yeah. Yeah. Adam uh, is less um, than thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, Adam you'll, hated that movie. You'll, too, you'll see when we get to, to like, my list. Yeah, like 11 p.m. That's gonna be in his bottom five. <laughs> Obviously. So Stay sad. tuned. But it says. Um. Yeah, I think that's about it. I don't know if I have any. Um, anything that we had ranked really high that I have ranked really low. Snyder Cut's not as low. Um, I got Snyder Cut at 44. I think that's about f- upper 40s for us. 51. 50s. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's about it on there. Cool. cool. Popcorn someone for the next one. Yeah. 
Um, I'll great list, ties, Blake. Dude. Yeah, great, great list. Great list. Yeah. Good all around. Well, uh, I can go. I'm fine. I suppose that's fine. Okay, Ty. What do you want? To, what do you want first? Bottom, bottom five, man. Start at the bottom. bottom. Five. Work your way up. All right. Well, I got to keep America. Man, yeah, I'm uh, keep America pickle down there. 60? Number really? 60, really? Yep. I didn't think. I didn't, I, I didn't think he hated it that much. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I like yeah, that you're, you're there definitely with solidarity. Like the worst. It's got to be the worst movie on this list. It has to be, dude. I don't even think you know it's what I mean? uh, Like, there might be worse movies League? than this out there. The original Justice but League? To me, Blake, I feel like needle. you ripped that one the worst, ju- the original Justice League. You absolutely yeah, hate that I think that I movie. had that. Uh, that might have been, like, eight to bottom. Well, yeah, that wasn't like even that. In, your, in your bottom five. Yeah, it's true. Didn't That's the one. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Wonder Woman eighty four. I figured that was gonna yeah. Be I figured that. Was, I thought I was that. That's what I thought was gonna be bottom of your list. Yeah. Uh, fifty eight Justice League. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair, understandable. Um, fifty seven. I think I gotta go with Project Power. Okay. okay. That is in our bottom Thank five you. as well. And then 56, I, high tension is going to stay for me. Yeah. Yeah, me and Ty were the ones that were not very Yeah, I just I, it just I didn't take to that movie that much. Yeah, that might be like the most two-sided one where it's two people against two people. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, I think, I think uh, high tension is it just one of those films where if, if you caught it back in I think so too, Blake. Yeah. Seven, yeah. Like, okay. Fucking sci-fi at like one in the morning. You're like, oh my God, this movie's <laughs> awesome. I think you're right. <laughs> Yeah, different time, I guess. Just the con her with the concrete saw, man, it's so yeah, good. Different time, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, All right. Uh, let's start off your top fifteen then, Ty. Number fifteen. You want me to start from one, or you want you want yeah, me to build up from, like Blake yeah, did? Yeah, build up like Blake did. We'll do it that way. All right, uh, fifteen. Trick or treat. Hey! Oh, wow! Like that, wow! Like that, yeah. Sneaky good answer. I was not expecting that. that. Trick, or treat. trick or treat. Trick or treat on our movie. list favorite, is uh, favorite side story in Trick or Treat, Ty, or whatever you want to call it. A uh, little um, vignette. anything that has to do with Sam. Okay. You like Sam? I love, I love Sam. Yeah, little, he just he makes that whole movie. With the pumpkin thing. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Trying to think of what else is in there. He's I like, really it's got like a name. <laughs> no, I just werewolf forgot what it was. Man. I knew it had a name. The werewolf one's pretty cool. Yeah, werewolf I liked. Yeah, uh, the little awesome. kids in the quarry was pretty cool too. Yeah, I just yeah, I love that movie so much. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so good. You know what? Um, you know what movie just came? I want to say it's on HBO Max, and it's a movie I I never saw as a kid, but the trailer and the poster gave me nightmares for like weeks. And Ryan Hollinger just did a, a video on it. Darkness Falls. Ooh. Oh, you know wait, you've never seen that? I've never seen Darkness Falls. It's like it's really? legitimately the movie. Like, it's one of those things where like I really haven't seen it. And I know it's probably crappy at this point, but like yeah, the idea kind of that the tooth fairy was gonna kill you if you went into the dark. Because I was a kid, that I was just, I was terrified of the dark anyways. So like I just mm. had nightmares that like it was either a, a full uh, uh, a new moon, so there was no moonlight, or like right. my my uh, lamp, my my my, my nightlight went out and I was mm. just gone. Okay, I haven't. I don't even really know what that is, to be honest. It's a. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Know. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Like, that was like 2003 when that movie came out, or something like that. Maybe even yeah. earlier. Another it's one of those. Um. Yeah, it's like a sci-fi movies. If you would have sure. Yeah, yeah okay. it's like it's like a, a northeast or a New England town set on the water, and they're cursed by the tooth fairy. But yeah. the tooth fairy uh, comes in like kills you rather than. Leaves you know, a present. Yeah, exactly. Or a dollar or whatever. But the big thing is there's a big lighthouse with a lamp on it that's going around. And, like, it, for some reason, if you go into the dark, she, like, comes in and takes you and kills you. I always got so you got to stay in the light of the lighthouse? The Fog remake. That's kind of crazy, actually. Yeah, and, like, everyone's got, like, flashlights or anything like that. But, yeah, and it's uh, it's called Darkness Falls. So, like, it, idea is, you know, don't go in the dark and everything. But, yeah, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen the Fog remake either. I've seen bits of the original oh, The Fog. Okay. So check out yeah. both of those anyways. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to get in on Darkness Falls this week. Sorry, big tangent there, guys. Just uh, caught my memory. All good. 
14. Uh, we'll 14, uh, you know, I don't really care what anybody else thinks, so uh -oh. Frozen 2, it's my jam. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I, I, knew, I knew that one was probably in here. Yeah. Does that yeah. mean, you know what, I, I won't even really ask. I was going to ask if that, does that mean Frozen 1's out of the top 15? Because I know you always said Frozen 2. Was yeah, his favorite? Was your favorite? Frozen. Frozen Two is a better movie, but One means more to me. So okay. that ain't okay. Bit of yeah. sizzle. Then I will, I that, will say, stay tuned. I'm guessing. Yeah. If that. Spoiler alert. All right. Well, I yeah. I mean, actually, you give it. Whatever. All I'll right. Keep let's going. Keep going. Uh, thirteen. Deadpool. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. I can yeah, that's that's that. pretty high yeah. up there, but I, you know, that makes sense. For what it did for superhero movies and sure. it being the first rated R one, it was yeah, it was incredible, and it's it's damn near flawless. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty good comedy. Doesn't get much better. Uh, than that. Twelve Green Room. Ooh, Ooh, okay, that's about no. I think I had nine, so about same area. Same yeah. area. It looks like we're all high on Green Room. Yeah. Was that uh, your first watch, bro? So that's actually uh, at the same uh, spot on yeah. the entropy list. Yeah. <laughs> So that that was your first watch, huh? Yeah, and that was my first okay. watch. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, eleven Inception. Yep. All right. Still exactly good. I had it. it is still good. Uh, ten Halloween. Okay. The original. I like it. I'm assuming. Yeah, 2018's down lower. Yeah. I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Original. Yeah, that, that actually, I didn't know you were that high on that movie. I, think I just, I, again, it's one yeah. of those movies that, like, yeah. it's just for what it did for the genre and, like, what it's still doing today. Okay. It, I, and, again, it's one of those movies that's, like, pretty close to being pretty perfect. Um, you got to remember, too, they're just, gotta be out there. when, like, we were growing up, I feel like that's, that is our parents' generation's, like, you know, go to, that's, like, their hereditary or okay. something yeah. like that. Oh, okay. So that was yeah. a lot of, we were introduced to that one of, like, oh, you're watching scary movies now? You're that's watching Halloween. Halloween. That's like, what my dad showed me. Yeah. And so, when like, I, I feel like, horror. I feel like it's just kind of embedded. And, like, that was, we also grew up in like the return of the, the, you know, the Neo slasher, the screams and everything. So to have the definitive slasher there too, you know, sure. you're almost on like the second wave of that in your, in your generation. You, yeah. You, you, yeah. you would you be a, a zoomer? A, a, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm 2000. So I'm like right in between. Okay. I, I probably identify more with Gen Z, but like, I remember a time before iPhone. The internet. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the inter Yeah. I remember 2007. So, uh, where it wasn't that like. Fair it enough. wasn't what it wasn't what we had today, you know. I remember phone books. Hey, oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, keep going on, Ty. I don't don't know what number we're on now. Ten. Maybe? Uh, nine. Nine. nine okay. I have prisoners. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, definitely one you were high on as well. I love that movie. It's so good. It's very good. Any V man. I remember that first came out. That movie was so good, and it just uh, the weather in that movie. Yeah, you said. Mood. Didn't yeah, you yeah, say yeah, you had yeah, another man. day like like Blake's where you had the mood match, or was that on a different movie? Yeah. yeah. No. Anytime I try to watch a movie that I know is like that, I try to almost wait for that day, mm. and then I'm like, I gotta watch it now. Prisoners. Day. Yeah, Prisoners a is prisoners a fall day. movie, but it's that Definitely. weird fall fall movie where it actually happened. Like you watch it after Halloween. <laughs> like, yeah, like you get in the yeah. weird, yeah, November yeah. Overcast, yeah, yeah. I I know the exact Rex. time of year you're referencing, and you're right; it fits perfectly. Did you um Did you catch Prisoners in Theater, man, or did you catch it um uh, like at home? Yeah, that no, was the... I I got it in theaters. Sorry, I was oh, answering dope. the question. Yeah, I wish I would have got that. <laughs> just it was so good. It's all idiot. good. It's all yeah, good. <laughs> uh, just thinking it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, buddy. Sorry, Tyler. Um, no, you're good. All right, yeah. continue great, on. Great choice. <laughs> Unless you got more to say, I'm good. I right. I'm gonna eight. Eight. Eight is a uh, Kill Bill, Volume One or Volume Ooh. Two? Volume One. All right. Solid, solid. That was another. Yeah, I mean, when that came yeah. out, that just blew the doors off places. It felt like, dude, I love that movie, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's yeah. still too low. That's one of the ones where it's. I think it's too low on the entropy list, personally. I agree too, because what is it now on the entropy list? Like, it's like eighteen. Yeah, or something? it's way seventeen. Too low. Jeez, man. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of movies we have above it that I just don't know. <laughs> what else you got? I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, seven. Your name. 
Hey. hey. Okay. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad this is on your top after, ten. After yeah, it been it had been hyped a it lot. Been, yeah. 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 That that's I'm exciting for me. Up, uh, really high for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yeah, that was your first time watching, right? Yep. Yeah. I'm glad. Like, where was that on yours? So much. Um, actually, I just want to pull that up right now. Uh, let me see. I imagine like a mid twenties. Twenty three. Okay. <laughs> uh, right between Doc Doctor Sleeps above it, Soul is right underneath it. Okay. I think uh, yeah, that plays for you. That's I get, uh, I get that very there. appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, continue on time, or unless you would want to talk about your name a little bit. No, I just it was. Yeah, just it's not very often that somebody can show me an anime, mm -hmm. whether it's a film or a show, and I'm the one that's impressed. Sure. Right. Uh, yeah. Usually yeah. I'm like the right. Exactly. Usually I'm the one that people are like, well, what should I watch? Mm -hmm. Right. Um. So, yeah, I, I very pleasantly surprised. Good. Good. Six. Get out. Oh, like it. Yeah. That's solid. Uh, I can't really disagree with that. Yeah, get out's one of those movies you could just Work. put it anywhere on the top ten, and you're just like, "Yep, yeah. all right, yep. cool. <laughs> everyone, yeah, for sure. good." Everyone yeah, will. everyone understands. <laughs> Everyone's on board. No one's really going to argue that much. Hell, you could have it number one, and I really wouldn't argue that much. <laughs> Fair. She definitely could. All right, we're in the top five. Top five, number five, number five. Arrival. Oh, okay, that's uh, right. Where it's at on the edge list, right? No, no, it's, no it's three. Uh, I oh, think it's yeah, three. Never mind, never mind, yeah. never I misspoke. It was one for a long time. It was, it was. Um, and then the shiny. Arrival. Yeah, what do you like about Arrival so much, Ty? Like, I mean, we talked about Blake loves the, the different alien take. Well, I, that's such a unique sci-fi movie. Yeah, I think that was like the, the biggest thing for me is I really didn't know what it was. And then I forgot who it was, but somebody came to work and they're like, have you seen this? And I'm like, no. I think I, I know what this is. I think that was Bobby John, in a weird Maybe. way, because he was buying I it. I, for, for, I think this was like one of the first conversations, like where you and I actually talked. It might have been. I have no recollection. This it was just 2017, it, I think. Yeah, because I had just started working at Best Buy basically when when we were there, and I'm pretty sure this is like one of the first conversations Tyler and I had was mm -hmm. about this. And I went home, watched, and it blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, this is so good. Yeah. Different languages, how you communicate. It's wild. It's a crazy yeah, movie. Man. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Yeah, it definitely. Shout out Forrest Whitaker as well. Forrest. Yep. You yep. mentioned him. Hey, and, uh, what's, uh, what's his name? Jeremy. I'll Jeremy Renner. His last name. Yep. Camp Renner. Good cast. <laughs> uh, Four. Number Hereditary. four. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would have been. That. I would have been shocked if that didn't make the the top fifteen. Yeah, oh, it's down, it's up there, man. This was in like the, this was a first watch for me when we watched this. Really? really? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Because I just I, everybody was like it's so good, and I just had to put it off. Mm -hmm. Did you watch it by yourself, or did you watch it with Nathaniel? I know you guys were living. No, together. I watched it by myself, <laughs> okay. but. I remember nobody was home, and because we were talking about how I needed to upgrade my TV, I found myself that's like right. on yeah. the coffee table. Oh, that's right, yeah. Like I the that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. So yeah, um, I watched this on my three. OLED to scare the shit out of me. So maybe don't <laughs> okay. get a good TV. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I gotta rewatch it now that I got the. The 75. For sure. Mm, uh, and yeah. the sound bar. I think I'm going to hold on to uh, probably around October or so to try to rewatch that. Yeah. Um, that was one where I just It's went. hard for me to get into like any kind of horror stuff without it yeah. being fall. Yeah. Or, or Nathaniel yeah. just kind of, forcing kind of you to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, we just had like a midsummer horror fest on it, like a, a little low key one. We had like four or five movies. We had like four horror movies in like Horror makes weeks. up so much of mine and Blake's just. Yeah. movie diet mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's like, like that's my go-to genre when i'm just bored or sure. like looking for something it's just the thing that yeah nathaniel's like i want to feel something i don't care if it's pain <laughs> <or> fear <laughs> just want to feel something all right back to you ty uh, three the bronze medal django. bronze medal django giving it to tarantino no that was low blake you had it like seven right 
Blake, Blake, are you there? Oh, is he freeze? I can't he, tell. Yeah, he looks frozen. He does look frozen. Standing by. <laughs> now recording. Now <laughs> recording. <laughs> All right, we'll see if he comes back in a second. But uh, why Why three for Django, Ty? Ty? Django's just so good. Uh, mm. I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. Uh, I love Jamie Foxx. He killed that movie. Mm. Uh, I just like the overall story of it and then you it's beautiful uh, to look at right i mean it's it's it is a stunning film and then you throw like home run people in there mm-hmm. uh like leo and Christoph samuel Waltz. jackson and yeah and, and it just it grows and it yeah i just it's i love it it's great yeah i think it's a phenomenal movie i don't think anyone could disagree you uh, can. Number two. <laughs> my list. Number two. The silver silver medal. medal. Blake, I wish you were here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, I say. summoned him. <laughs> <laughs> now recording. Ah, oh, shit. It's, it's Jiren. It's Jark. <laughs> He's showing up. <laughs> you guys got me now? Or am I yes. Still? Yeah. yeah, we got okay. you. Sure. What was the question? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can't hear like you sound, uh, I think you're going to have to back out and record or re go again. And now he's frozen. Oh, and he's and back he's out. Gone. I think you might have to turn off his. Uh... We told you it was going to be a loose episode, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, listeners. Thank you for taking that uh, technical break with us. Although it was just a split second for you. Maybe it was intermission. Yeah, a little Bo Burnham intermission. Maybe we... Uh, ding, yes, ding, Bo Burnham, ding. the inventor of the intermission. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's just what my head goes to. Because I've, I just it's have, the most recent thing you've seen with an intermission. Dude, yeah, well, yes. Uh, and I've just... I haven't been w- telling you guys on what we're watching, but I've just been watching that on repeat like, yeah, at I, night, every, almost every night. I heard you say that. And, <laughs> and listening to the soundtrack like every day. It's just like, it's bad. Are, should we be concerned? No, because it's mother so and good. I are worried. <laughs> it's so good. Papa Schwartz and I had a discussion today down at the Best Buy. <laughs> we're worried. Yeah, Tyler and I. That was the real reason your sister needed a laptop. <laughs> we wanted to talk to your dad about yeah. your your inside. It was all a ploy. Fetish. Yeah. All right, number one, Ty. Uh, Gold medal. What was two? Oh, you had number two. I'm sorry. I, I, thought we got, I thought we got to one. Number one. Number Three. Two. Django. Three. Two. Django. Two. Pans. Ooh, fair. I kind of knew this was gonna be yeah. one or two. Here. I knew he was high on him and Nathaniel. Yeah, him and the high. Yeah, him and Nathaniel are like whoo. <laughs> we so are like whoo. <laughs> Pan's yeah. Labyrinth woo. can't get enough. Yeah, it's um, yeah. it's a real good one. It really is. And if you want to know more, go listen to our episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was somewhat early on. <laughs> yeah, it was one of their, our early calls of just like we got me we and Tyler get, putting our foot down. We got to do this yeah. one. Yeah, let me see if I can find what episode it is. It might have been like twenty somewhere in there, or it could have been like early teens. Uh, it was twelve. Twelve early teens. It is early teens. It is. <laughs> it's not even a teen. Oh, uh, I was about to say make the same joke, but I was like, the thing was gonna get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number one, get drum roll, the drum shining. roll. Oh drum roll. man, Clap. It. all right, it's all good. The Shining, yeah, fair. Which is which is also number one on our entry on our entropy list, of course. Yep, it deserves to be there. So yeah, yeah Tyler, talk a little bit more. Was this because I, I, I can't remember? Were you always this high on The Shining, or was this kind of a revisit that kind of reignited the love for it, or or you just? Uh, a little bit both. I was still relatively high on this uh, when b- before we watched it, before I talked about it, because I had seen it before. But I think just, uh, you know, living with a humble master degrees, Idiot. something or about it, or yeah. a guy. Uh, film film douche. Guy who knows a lot of <laughs> Is, uh, you, uh, you, you pick up a couple of different things and you kind of start to look at different things in a different way, in a different light. And, you know, that's something that obviously I'll always have to, you know, be appreciative of is to, to have, you know, that and to be able to live with someone like that. And so, yeah, I think after being able to watch it in my 30s and look at it from more of an analytical standpoint sure. um, and view it through that lens, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, you you get to 
you, you, I don't, you just you love it more. Uh, I, at first, I just loved it because it was a good movie and the score is something you can never forget. And True. because it was scary. Yeah. And I was a, I was a kid. And then, you it's know, still now scary. that I'm an adult, it's still scary. Yeah. But I get to be like, oh, that's why. It's, that's <laughs> <how I know." laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's... um. I love that movie. We'll yeah. we'll talk about it more. I'm sure. Cool. Well, that's great uh, list, man. Yeah, that's a top fifteen. Good, uh, good, solid Thanks, list there. Fellas. Any uh, notable movers or shakers uh, outside of the top fifteen that you you'd want to throw up there? You know, um, that might have like way different. Just, just because I got yelled at for it, it just it's, sixteen can be Dunkirk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. please papa schwartz yeah papa schwartz yelled at me i got i got shunned as yeah. did we all so fair <laughs> so that's my honorable mention you're welcome okay um i mean at the end of the day it's still a really good movie <laughs> yeah it is it definitely is it's a great movie for sure um what about anything else anything uh going a lot further down on the list or anything moving up quite a bit i know you said frozen's not- obviously yeah, where's yeah? Where would Frozen be? Frozen, I have at twenty one. Oh, that's a lot lower than I thought. Yeah, but it's a whole ten spots up. True, true. I didn't bury Itu Mama Tambien. It's <laughs> down there. Sure. I'm yeah. sure Adam put it at 61. <laughs> I, I, I just left. I didn't, I just left it I didn't hate it that much. I didn't hate it really at all. I liked that movie, in fact. But, uh, uh, okay. Other than that, not, not a whole lot of things moved around. Cool, cool. cool. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Why don't you popcorn me or Nathaniel? Oh, popcorn you or Nathaniel. Yeah, let that pregnant drum roll. Yeah, let, let that pregnant pause <laughs> play out. Can, can we get the cricket noise, please? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, Nathaniel, why don't you go ahead? Okay, I'll go ahead. Let me uh, let me pull up my my list. Popcorn, here. Nathaniel. Okay. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you, sir. All right, so starting from the bottom, I suppose. Um, man, I feel like my list. So yeah, I I do have to confess to the listeners too. My list is still, I think, a little amorphous. I um, um, didn't actually put pen to paper until about thirty minutes before the podcast needed <laughs> to start. So, uh, but it'll be good. I feel like a lot of these are like emotional, like gut reactions too. Yeah. So it'll it'll be it'll be on there, and we'll say very biased. Um, yes, yeah, sixty Justice League, twenty seventeen. Okay, absolute good. dog Finally shit of a movie. Um, <laughs> like I'm I offended that that was ripping the movie. <laughs> I'm offended that that movie sh- got released. Yeah. like it genuinely should not have yeah. been released. It's an absolute like affront to movies, and mm-hmm. it's and it's now, just there to fucking make money. Now let me ask you this: Then is obviously we we always thought that movie was bad, even when it first came out in twenty seventeen or whatever. Did you hate it more after Snyder Cut came out? Uh, no, not, not necessarily because I think, because bit of sizzle Snyder cuts, not much higher above it for me. Like, I still think there is so much functionally about that story that just does not fucking work. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just dog shit movie should be at the bottom. Like American pickle might be bad. Justice League is 2017 is just almost not a movie. Like it's just <laughs> from a structural story standpoint, like it makes me sad to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 59. I had project power mainly because I, I, I genuinely forget. We watch this movie almost oh, all the time. Yeah. Like, every time I see it on here, I go, Oh yeah, that's a movie. Like, yeah. So, um, for it to just be a nothing for me, that's just kind of what it is. Um, Netflix needs to get their shit together. I've been thinking about this a lot recently. And because they're because these streaming services are starting to take older content and then things that actually have cultural relevance off of Netflix and like over and doing more of their own stuff, there's just so much just fucking bullshit on that site now. Mm-hmm. Um, and Project Power is a good example of it. Uh, another great example of just bullshit on a site is The Tomorrow War, which is at 58 um oh, fair just 
like I said earlier, J.K. Simmons is the only thing about that movie that I think works, but that's a movie that's like diametrically so, so opposed with itself. Really, in the two weeks, I didn't think you were that low on it before. So in, in this, this really has aged poorly. It aged like week. fucking milk. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> this thing's dairy over here. All right. Yeah, it's just, it, it's a movie that I don't think works. I feel like Chris Pratt is par- playing a different character scene to scene. It's a story that I've, it's, it's not only, it, when I say story that I've seen before, I don't mean the fact that we reference that it's Edge of Tomorrow or that it, it uses the, the time machine from Deja Vu mm-hmm. or that um, there's even another one that I was thinking about earlier today that's an, an even better example or uh, an, another movie similar to it as well. It's just, it's just nothing. It's and it's and it's not only it's nothing. It's just bad nothing too. Mm, yeah. um, and so it's it, fucking okay. two and a half hours long. <laughs> um, yeah, way too long. Uh, Fifty-seven. I have the purge. Um, okay, down there. Yeah. Um, just like a perfect example of a movie that had great concept, terrible execution. Um, the fact that that movie is a home invasion movie is just insane to me when you have the purge as yeah. a concept. Um, I agree, and I, like, man. I sort of get it. I think, you know, it's, it definitely feels like it's almost a budgetary constraint at this point, Yeah, but like you could have done something with, I mean, 28 days later also uses like almost no people and makes it feel like, you know, that's the most isolating movie of all time. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, 56, the boondock saints. Okay. Uh, definitely okay. a movie that you know. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't know if a movie's maybe fallen more like personally over time for me, um, where I just I loved it when it came out because it was just this like shotgun blast to my face and like that was like the movie that you know again you're you're a white kid in the suburbs you think that movie's edgy and like awesome when you're at, you know eleven yeah that was one um, of the older brother movies that you said yeah it's like, yeah, oh, yeah you haven't seen the Boondock Saints right yeah and you know it's it's gratuitous violence and and, mm-hmm. and stupidity and whatever um but you know just hasn't hasn't aged well Willem Dafoe um, in that movie though was incredible yeah he's, William Dafoe he's the best part of that movie is for sure. is definitely great in there uh and so fifty five rounding rounding out the uh, shit tier list uh Zack Snyder's Justice League twenty 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 one oh okay <laughs> Good. wow. Both Justice League. Good. Yeah, it's it's four hours long. I keep coming back to that. Yeah, it took me three sittings to watch it. And like, you know what? I will always enjoy the time we had with it, where it was just like it was an event. We got to see it and everything. Yeah, but sure, like, sure. it's just the, there's it's parts terrible. of it that just yeah are not good. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, so. That's yeah. Bottom. The womp womp. Bottom, bottom five. Yeah. Bottom bottom fifty five. Uh, or bottom five. So kicking it off, um, from fifteen and up. Fifteen and up. I have uh, Kill Bill Volume One. Ah, okay. Clocking in at fifteen, um, for sure. Okay. Respectable. Um, yeah, it's it's another one where I just, I think I kind of brought it up at the at the time too. When I think of my 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 Tarantino canon, it's just not as high up there anymore. I mean, at the time. Again, it's one of those movies that I think at the time I was like, this blew my absolute mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, um, that's where I've got it. Uh, 14, I've got Inception. Okay. Um, sure. Just a movie that I think is great and awesome, but at the, uh, you know, kind of when I was making this, it was like, would I rather watch this or this right now? Like, yeah. if you gave this, a, a t- if you gave I me the option right, right now, would I pick this or or one above it? And. As much as I like Inception, I've just seen it so many times. Yeah, the rewatchability on it is just not, it's yeah, not there, man. Not the same as as I, want, as I thought it might have been at the mm-hmm. time. Um, so, yeah. 13, Requiem for a Dream. A um, little one of a surprising one for me, I think, uh, this time, because I watched this for the first time last year and was like found it pretty kind of harrowing. Yeah. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> Yikes. Oh man. No, that's heroin. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when I rewatched it um earlier in this year, I was surprised or for the podcast, I was surprised at how much um I enjoyed revisiting it. So uh, yeah. for that reason, I I think it put it there. Uh 12 I have Halloween, the original. Okay. I thought, that would be, I thought that would be higher for you. Yeah, I mean, I I love that movie, and there's um, there's definitely parts of it, you know, that are that are in there. But um, in like a 
since of I've, I've got an evening free, am I putting on Halloween? There's sure. other things that I would put on. Yeah, above yeah, it. that's not one I want to rewatch often. Yeah, but so eleven, and even though it is top eleven, this may be controversial. I actually have a rival at eleven. That's oh. I, <laughs> I'm not mad it's, about it's that. It's still cracked I can in understand. top fifteen, though. So yeah, right, it's like kind of the the end goal here. Yeah, yeah. I do think that is. I I personally think rival is a little high. Um. Trying to see where I have it on mine. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a little high, but I do still think it's very. Good. Yeah, I'm it, not mad at 11 at all. I can yeah, totally understand and I think that. if it was like if it had been like my first introduction to Denny V, it might have like a, a little bit of a, a higher sure. place in it. Yeah. There's also when I saw it in theaters, I saw it in the front row, like the uh, very front okay, row, yeah, and like that's that's, that's, that's how it was. Yeah, and so even on the rewatching of it too, knowing kind of what was happening, I think that was kind of took Probably me out of it a little bit. It, yeah. yeah, too, yeah. but still a great movie. Let me ask you this then. I'm I'm sorry to cut no, you. No, no, go ahead. Um, where do you where do you put that in the Denny V catalog then? Obviously, if you have that eleven. And well, I, I may be talking. Alert. I don't know. If yeah, you know I may else. be talking about that soon um, okay, fair, as fair, well fair. too. We'll, see, but we'll save it. Um, but yeah, I think I think for me, Blade Runner twenty forty nine might be my top Denny V it's movie. Brilliant. It might be mine too. Um, it's just it's the one that like if I'm talking about movie theater experiences, I that was like one of my first ones in Dolby, and like it just absolutely blew my mind i saw it like at 11 a.m kind of like how tyler and i talk about sometimes but we'll go to the movies in the morning with like a cup of coffee or something like that and just kind of wake up at the movies it was definitely one of those moments for me and just yeah it's um it, everything about it that movie's insane to me and i love it um so yeah um number 10 top 10 is uh your name Hey, there we go. Crack the top 10. Yeah, for sure. Um, just a, a, another movie that really, kind of like Tyler said, caught me by surprise when I first saw it. Caught um, me by a fucking train <laughs> of surprise. <laughs> I did uh, not see that train coming, man. Yeah, it's um, just an absolute emotional roller coaster every every step of the way. Um, and just any movie that, like, as cliche as it is to say, make you feel that much, I think, um, you know, is just is doing something really effectively. So... Um. Yeah, one of the ones that just hits home for me for sure. Nine, green room. Oh, okay. Nice. Ooh, same yeah. spot. Cool. Cool. Um, just a fantastic movie. I I, I love it. It's uh, it's m- lean, mean, dirty machine. It's um, such a great just experience. Um, and yeah, I think that's something that comes up a lot in kind of my top ten here. And kind of as I've gotten older, I feel like too, I just movies that move you out of emotional places and how and into other emotional spaces and how effective they are at that are just the movies that i seem to come back to more and more Mm -hmm. for sure um nowadays um and speaking of that one movie that i found much more affecting the second time was uh dunkirk actually i have it at number eight okay um papa schwartz will be proud yeah this this might be my favorite nolan movie at the moment Um, really at the moment or you really think overall yeah i i feel like we we talk about how Nolan so often uses time as like this metaphor and and mm-hmm. and time is so involved in this movie and this and this time he uses time um as this this great morning of how of of how like how it's always ticking down and how much you don't have of it left and it just ties it so so emotionally to um how the, the that experience of Dunkirk and in, in in that movie in and of itself, I thought it just it really affected me this time. Mm-hmm. Um, that this time around my my rewatching of it. So, um, and I think it's 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 it looks great. Um, yeah, it's just it's a it really rose in like a personal favorite up there. Interstellar sure. is still obviously I think uh, one I could talk about as too as well too. Um, but pretty high up there at the moment. Cool. Um, number seven, Prisoners. All right. Fair. Uh, another movie that just, um, I, I just in my mind, I, I have such a, a a a strong sense of where I was and what was happening at the moment, and just like moment to moment existing in that film, just being so uncomfortable and so you know pushed to the edge of my seat. Um, it's a really good movie. And following along with that, number six, I have Hereditary. Um, I thought this a, would be higher. Lois. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, um, as much as I love Hereditary, Hereditary is a movie I watch, like, 
yeah, maybe yeah. once a year. Yeah, <laughs> like, most. I don't know how often I need to go back to that okay, one. Okay. Um, so this is more of a, a result of the which would I watch right now scale. Uh, yeah, not necessarily though. Too. I mean, I think it's just you know the I I feel like my, you know my top five or definitely top three are just those okay, those movies those, that are those just killers, yeah. that are just favorites through and through. You know, complete bias. That's what these okay. are. These the entropy list is here for at this point. You know, yeah, today yeah. at least. Um. So, yeah. Um. Just where am I? Number okay. number six. Cool. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh. Number five. Django. Okay. Um, as we've kind of talked about, I think a couple times here, Blake, are you frozen or are you? No, I'm here. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure for a second. Yeah. Um, I don't think my video is going to work. I think that's going to kind of. Gotcha. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, so yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Five Django. We've already referenced it a couple times now. Um, I think yeah. it's maybe Tarantino's most singular vision like he just knew what he wanted sure, in this yeah, movie and yeah. it's kind of this nice little closed loop world to uh, you know i prefer it so much more to the hateful eight um mm-hmm. i think it's just this it, it it was it came out at a time that it just felt unique and weird and, and and different but also so very tarantino so yeah um yeah number four i have get out okay cool um, yeah Oh. You you love this movie, and I know you. I know you. Have, yeah, you've talked about it multiple and it's times. it's an it, again this movie. Uh, this is a movie that like I feel like this rewatch on the podcast has has moved it up higher in my estimation overall. Even really, okay. um, yeah. So. When I actually first saw it, I didn't love it. I I, I liked it. I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's one of those ones that seeing kind of the cultural impact moving forward because. As I think Blake and I kind of talked about on the on the podcast itself, for like for the horror heads, it's not that scary. Yeah, it's not. I, it's more for me. It's a thriller. Yeah, I don't really and it was just horror. marketed so much of that. And I feel like so the general po- general public's out um, kind of audience or take on it is always just so it's really, it's really scary. But for mm. us, it's just like it wasn't that scary. But still, the the message and the and the the cleverness behind yeah. it um, really elevated up there. So that's where it is for me for sure. Um, my phone just locked. Got to get my, my entropy list back. Uh, uh, so number three, the bronze medal, the bronze medal featuring a couple of bronzed people. Uh, Ooh. you know, cause there's a lot of sun. E2 Mama Tambi. Oh, <laughs> I knew it was coming. Uh. <laughs> I knew it was coming somewhere. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is why that movie is so high on our entropy list. <laughs> sure is. Here's the, uh, the outlier, the oddball number three on the Thanos. Yeah. List. So, um, Talked about it at the time. Talked about it ahead uh, ahead of time. Just, I think it's an incredible movie. I think it's a very singular um, story. I think it's a story we, you know, you just wouldn't come across. It would never come from an American studio in a million years. Um, and I think it's just, you know, it, it's. I think visually, I think performance wise, I think everything. It's a, uh, it's a great movie, but. Um, I'm. I know that's controversial in this group. <laughs> not, not not completely not controversial, but it's just, just just how high you have it. Mm. But I totally understand why. I really would like to go back and rewatch that now that I have taken my only one film class. But like even that, I feel like I've gained a lot of knowledge and know, what, know what to look for now. Whereas mm. before, when I watched, it, I just didn't know that much. And now that I have that a little bit more of that knowledge, I feel like I'd appreciate it a lot more, and it would probably move up on my list a lot. Yeah, you should read my dissertation. I would love to. <laughs> uh, number two speaking of which Pan's Labyrinth hey. probably not too much of a surprise here um, yeah I think Del Toro we've talked about to death you know he's just um, he's pretty great I like him a lot I think his um, you know both his friendship with Coron and, and, and Inuritu as well um, you know just having that out there and, and um, having these guys present in Hollywood and telling stories and being able to do so with these, with these budgets and, and everything. It's just, um, such, so special to me. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think Pan's Labyrinth is just a, a singular vision. Um, a great movie. And so number one, uh, with bullet still the shining, yeah, um, yeah, holding it down Weird. for the underground. Get and the applause going. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. The rare double applause. Um, oh. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. I think, and 
I mean, I do want to emphasize there's I I got a list in my back pocket of probably five things that, you know, if we watched <laughs> would be above the shining, would be number one or something like that. But um we'll see how it goes the next next uh year or so next here. Year or so, yeah. But uh yeah, we've we've talked about the shining a lot. I think on a um you know, it's a it's a movie that hits both on a personal emotional level, like for me and my nostalgia of it and what it means to me, and also just um critically and you know the academically and in kind of public opinion on it as well um and kind of what it means and represents it's just this nice marriage of both of those things and sure um, yeah that's why it's number one for me cool totally understand all that <laughs> um so movers and shakers i guess or uppers and yeah downers? uppers and downers yeah, you know you get a little have? of a, a recovery reference um <laughs> <laughs> whiplash is uh actually at 18 for me is that um, that's up from or that's down from 11, I think? Yeah, yeah, that was kind of my first one. I don't love Whiplash. I like most of it. It's. I'll say this. It's It's definitely a um, a experience in a, in, a, in a, and when you're in it, you're in it um, mm-hmm. and everything. But it's just, it's one that just, besides J.K. Simmons' performance in it, I think shot choice-wise or directorial-wise, that it didn't really stand out to me the way that some of the, the other really? like 15, top 15 did, yeah. Okay. Um trying to think what else on here uh boys in the hood i actually have it uh 16 um so right outside the top 15 that was my honorable mention oh okay yeah, um yeah, like that was your first watch too right yes yeah um gotcha. judas and the black messiah i actually have at 25 i know that was a, a high-ranking yeah, wow. one yeah um, i remember you yeah. being a little bit lower on it just not overall impressed with with its yeah it, for execution. me it's really the age thing um, that yeah. really takes me yeah, out of it. Yeah, it does for me too. Um, and it just, uh, yeah, it just didn't quite hit as, as much for me, um, for sure. Uh, let's see what else I got on here. Um, blind spotting for me up front is at, uh, 29. Um, okay. so up a little bit there. Uh, the descent is at 35, uh, definitely up a few spaces for that. Ma Rainey's I actually have down at 40. I just... It's another one of those ones that, as much as I enjoyed, um, uh, didn't connect. Well, yeah, but I, it definitely did. Like, it, it's just for me, everything that does connect to one is the Chadwick Boseman character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's sure. and uh, that being that kind of access into it. So, um, yeah, I will say mine was also a lot lower than we ranked it. Yeah. Um, so talked about um, a quiet place. I've got that down at forty-two. Uh, right, actually, forty-three is a quiet place part two. Um, high tensions up to 45 for me. King of Staten Island, I brought up to 47. Um, and then after that, King of Staten Island, yeah, it's like, I still have that one. I don't know if that's where it's going to final, where its final place is going to be, but, uh, yeah. I think King of Staten Island for me is a little bit low on our entry. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely is. Um it's still the one that like, kind of like is the hinge point for me of yeah. when when good things go bad, but it should be a little bit higher on there. Yeah. So yeah. um Wonder Woman eighty four is at fifty two, I guess. So I, I I don't know if I can remember doing that. Um mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned that, but I don't yeah, yeah that doesn't uh, surprise me at all. So yeah, those uh that's that's my list. All good right. list there, bud. Thanks, it is a good man. list there, bud. I guess I'll uh, finish her off here, boys. Pop, uh, popcorn someone, Nathaniel. Uh, Adam. I popcorn. Me? I popcorn him, uh, no, Adam Birkenbach. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we're calling him in. <laughs> okay. Our first ever call in is just screw me over, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Birkenbach. So many people would be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's who we brought in. No, first that's one. Adam if you're listening. But. Yeah. No, that's that would be hilarious. All right. Uh, bottom five here, guys. Starting it off at, to no one's surprise, high tension. Wow, you really hate this movie. I don't. It's not that I hate this movie. It's just I don't enjoy it to an extent where it's like I really never want to watch this again. Yeah. It's not. There's nothing like objectively terrible about it. It's just like I. It was just so unenjoyable for me. I, <laughs> no, I it's got, fine. I got no joy from watching this movie. You don't even hate it. You're just disinterested. In exactly. It. <laughs> it's just completely zero percent interest in it. it I, I I don't. I feel bad like shit talking it, and I don't want to because I, I understand its value. I understand why you guys like it. Mm. But for me, I just while I was watching this watching this movie, I was like, why? Just why? not for me. Huh? Not for me at all. Fair enough. And you know, it is what it is. Uh, Fifty nine. Justice League, twenty seventeen. 
self-explanatory. So yeah, is this disinterest too, or do you viscerally hate this? I don't viscerally <laughs> hate this. This is just one where I'm like, this is bad, and I, I can understand it. Okay. It's bad, and th- you know what? Everyone's exhausted the fact that it's bad. I don't want to really keep reiterating that, sure. but it's just, I, I'm in agreeance. We'll leave it at that. Uh, 58, The Purge. One that uh, I wasn't really planning on having this low, but when I kind of thought about it, I was like, yeah, the quality of the movie overall wasn't that good, but I still stand by that I love the idea of this. And mm. I haven't gone back to watch the sequels, but I will at some point because I do like this I universe. Just feel like, I can't believe they have Ethan Hawke in this movie and it's this low. Yeah. Like, that's 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 impressive. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and uh, Cersei Lannister. Uh, yeah, Lena uh, Hetty. Lena Hetty, yeah. She's in it too. So... I don't know. Fell really flat. Must ju- must have just been they. They were like, "Oh, we got two main actors and didn't get a great writer, yeah. or whatever it was. Who knows?" But uh, yeah, uh, fifty. That was fifty eight. Bottom three. Uh, fifty seven. Project Power. Uh, this is again probably the most forgettable movie on this list. I for- don't. I only think about this movie when I see it on the entropy list. Every other <laughs> every other time to me throughout my existence, it is does not exist. Um. It's unfortunate, but uh, it, it you know it, it happened. The limit does not exist. Yeah, I just it's a Netflix movie, and you can kind of just leave it at that. I I just I, I miss jo- Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I wish he was in more things. Yeah, Come me too. Back, yeah, I had, he should be in more things. Yeah, I, he's doing video game stuff now. He's doing a lot of weird stuff, but uh, you know, do what you want, Joseph. Oh yeah, do what you want. <laughs> you know, thrive. I, I support you, but also I miss you. It's true. Yeah. All right, and uh, 56, the last of the bottom five, The Boondock Saints. Uh, this is one I, I enjoyed my time with it, but overall I just don't think it's that good, and I don't love it. it it's it's just like it, it's bare minimum okay for me. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think uh, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with there with you at this point, but yeah. um, we'll always have 2006 Boondock Saints. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got its spot in, in – uh, in in history, you know, I'll, 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 well, I, I honestly could see myself revisiting this movie at some point in time, just not anytime soon. Willem Dafoe, though, killing it. All right, that was my bottom five. We're gonna head on to the top fifteen here, starting it off with blind spotting. Uh, yeah, That's I get that. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really still like this one. Watched it twice, very. Or I watched it once, loved it so much that I recommended we watch it pretty early on in the pod, and then watched it again very soon after. Uh, I have since not rewatched it, and I actually haven't checked out the TV show because it's on the Showtime, and I don't think I have a way to get there. Mm. But I've heard, I've heard it's actually pretty good. The TV show, sure, probably is if it's the same kind of creative duo. For I think sure. it is. Yeah, the story I, I wasn't too interested in. It follows. Um, uh, it's Rafael Cassell. Yeah, his wife. Uh, yeah. Or girlfriend or whatever. Partner. Uh, yeah, partner. Um, follows her and, and, and their story. So I haven't checked it out yet. I've heard good things. But the movie, for me, just caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. And uh, I know everyone else liked it but wasn't super high on it. For me, it, you know, the messaging was a little maybe on the nose. Um, but, you know, I still kind of liked it. Yeah, I mean, I think looking back on it now, we both we were pretty pretty high on it for sure, but yeah. I think it's um it's ranked a little low on the entry list is. overall. I think, so I think too. at this point, but um yeah, we did really like it, and I and I, I think I'll still like it a lot when I go back and rewatch yeah. it. Yeah, hindsight being twenty twenty, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like I like Halloween at number fourteen. Original or twenty eighteen? Original. Sorry, we should really <laughs> keep clarifying that. Um, yeah, this is one where as I was going through my list, I was like. This is just such a good movie. I feel bad not putting in the top 15. Mm. This isn't one uh, we mentioned earlier. This isn't one I'm going to watch very often. It's not one I even like, I love so, so much. But like the, my entry list is a mix of things that I think are very good and deserve to be high sure. up and things I like and then a mix of the two. Yeah. This is more of a mix of the two where it's like, I like it a good amount. I think it's really, really great. Um, and it's just a, a well, great film overall. Uh, I don't have the slasher attachment to it that you guys have. For sure. But I still do really like it. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see the uh, next one when it comes out. Yeah, when yeah, we'll definitely comes. review that. That's you haven't done. Fall, right? You haven't done Scream yet, right? No, I still have not. Yeah, I'm excited for you to do that one too. Yeah, we'll get around. We'll get around. Uh, Thirteen, Kill Bill Volume Two. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I'll, I'll follow that up really quickly with Twelve is Kill Bill Volume One. Okay, so you're what? keeping them as a package. Keeping them, keeping them together because I, when we did this review, I, I told everyone. These are inseparable to me. They feel mm. like the same movie. I love both sure. movies almost dead equally, and having to pick one or the other was like 
really torture for me because I love them so, both so much. They're very different, honestly, they somehow. Um, but yet they both work in how they are different. Mm. Uh, and I, I just love them both so, so much. And I wish they were higher on our entry list. Um, both of them, not just uh, volume one. Move on to 11, Inception. This is... Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm, so, I'm, I'm cool with that. I think that was pretty close. To, we were all pretty around the same mark on yeah, that Yeah, we were uh, not super high, but not super low. Um, yeah, for me, this is another one where it's like, great movie. First watch for me is the biggest thing. Yeah. And then rewatchability. It was, it was such an event. It too. was. It really was. Um, and I, I mean, I didn't even watch it when it came out, but like, I just remember the hype around it. And it, the hype stayed for, I feel like, all the 2010s. Yeah, was. like... There's, I, I swear there's been, like, three shows I've watched, like, the past week that have all made, like, Inception jokes or references. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah exactly. I'm just like, God, this movie is just ubiquitous for yeah, a while. It, yeah, it, it still is. Uh, first Watch is incredible. Um, I, out of the known films, it's up there for me, for sure. Dark Knight just always kind of sits Dark there Knight is so mine, 100%. Yeah. That's, like, one of, that's one of my favorite movies. It's I genuinely top. forget that's a Nolan film how, oftentimes. Like, yeah. in terms of just, yeah, because it's just so revered in some ways, I think. Mm-hmm. I almost, like, you have to consider it outside of his canon. Yeah, because it, it's it's not, yeah, it's not necessarily a Nolan film. Like, he directed it, but it's, like, he, it's not his creative choice. Right, it's really. an adaptation. Sure, yeah, exactly. So, um... Yeah, out of that aside, and he's yeah he's working in his up. own set box mm-hmm. of of Batman and yeah, everything. Yeah, um, but this is definitely up there for Nolan. I don't know if it's number one though. I mean, if we're counting the Dark Knight, I would say that's definitely number one. Moving on here, uh, ten is Prisoners. It did make the, nice. it did make the top nice. fifteen. I was I think I'm the lowest on Prisoners, but I'm still pretty up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember when we reviewed it, I was like, yeah, this is really 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 good, um, but it, uh, to me, it's not like amazing at top echelon i i love it a lot i think it's great but you guys are like this is one of the best movies yeah. I, i've watched and I, I just didn't hit it didn't hit like that for hugh me. jackman in the bathroom with the hammer is just yeah <sighs> Har- like, harrowing man yeah and then not to hits make a different. requiem uh mm-hmm. <laughs> hits different there you go there you go is that a pun kind of he's hitting no. the hammer right yeah. we'll you go know, against the uh, it's the sink right or what wordplay yeah um, yeah, and uh, I like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in it as well. Jake Gyllenhaal's great. Yeah, you yeah. can't forget about him. They they, they kind of go back and forth at it in that whole movie. Uh, moving on here. Number moving nine, on. Dunkirk. Okay, Papa Schwartz will be happy. He will be happy. Uh, it is in the top ten here. Um, this is probably, I mean, obviously because of the, how I rank these, this is higher for me for Inception, uh, I think. To me, the story is mm. more rewatchable. I, I I have a soft spot for World War II set piece stuff. I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. and so this is really enjoyable for for me. Uh, I think it does so much with so little dialogue mm. in a, in an action movie and in a war movie uh, that it doesn't that is not often done like that. So uh, great directing. Uh, this though, I think the, I remember I remember one gripe being that there's it's not great at telling the timetables differently. Right. And uh, letting you know where sure. you are. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, uh, besides that little gripe, it's still a great, great movie. Number eight, it's going to be Green Room. Hey. Yeah. This is, uh, we watched this. This was supposed to be the Greyhound episode. It was, because yeah. We couldn't get access. Early on in the pod. This was like eight or seven or eight. Uh, we were going to review Greyhound and then couldn't get access to Apple TV on the big screen. And so we called the Audible. Threw on green room and man, was I not expecting that. Yeah. Um, this is quickly shot up there is like one of my favorite movies, and this is now a go-to movie for me to recommend to people. Like, if you have access to green room, like, yeah, if, if people Check ask, it me, out. yeah, because it's it's, it's one it's such a sleeper that no, I, I had never even really heard of it before sure. you showed it to me, and I don't think a lot of people have. And it's one people definitely should check out and watch. Yeah, Jeremy Saunier, I, I'll be just, I'll fa- I, it, like this earned me enough with him where like anything he does next, I'll watch. Like, sure. I'm, I'm yeah. fascinated by it. I'm mm-hmm. so, this is the reason when Anton Yelchin passed that I was just, I just, I yeah. couldn't believe it. It was yeah. awful that we lost him. Um, yeah, everyone in this movie is an incredible acting. The, the performances directing, are awesome. Yeah, yeah the directing. What, what keeps it good, so good for me is is it's, it feels so real. Like, yeah. Well, I'll uh, listen and, to the uh, the soundtrack often too. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, the, yeah. I have Nazi punks fuck off as like yeah. one of my go to tracks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, it just I I love the decisions the characters make for me because in movies it's so often I mm, why it's would organic. You do this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It feels so natural and real, and I love that. Mm. And and it it does it better than almost any movie I've ever seen. Really, sure. Yeah. Moving on up there to seven. Lucky get number out. seven. Get out. Get out. Get out of here with your mind control bullshit. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's not much more we can say about this because all four of us have talked a lot yeah. about it as we've gone around. Um, but, you know, this was for me when I watched this, I had heard the hype around it. This was like an early on horror film for me. This was me dipping my, dipping my toes yeah. in. Yeah. And so I, I came out very, very pleased. Uh, I was a little bit like you and Nathaniel were like, I really liked it when I first watched it mm-hmm. and rewatching it and then and then rewatching with the context of how it played out uh, culturally and socially really changed my my feeling on it yeah i think um it's something that you come back to and you find just another layer each time when you get to mm-hmm. kind of experience it yeah. and, I, and um yeah i'm just there's also a part of me i think when i first saw it too that didn't want to like give jordan peele his credit to yeah, of just sure. being like you, this your this, first one's this good like, yeah no. like <laughs> yeah you're a comedy guy and you're coming out and like dipping your toe into horror and like now you're just like doing that and that's not fair sure, not <laughs> to, at to, all. to him at all but yeah i think um just from a a writing standpoint, a directing standpoint, a, a performance standpoint, it just hits all the buttons. An editing standpoint, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Also great. Number six, Arrival. I uh, yeah, we we've talked about this. We talked quite about a bit this as well. well. Yeah, this was um, this was your first. That time was my first watching. The, yeah, 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 we that were was talking, my first, we first time watching. About that this, episode. this is like episode three, right? This is like the first movie we reviewed, I think. Uh, no, the first one was King's Down. King, yeah, sorry, yeah. I, meant, I meant like uh, after the after the launch, but yeah, uh, it might have been the first number second or third. But yeah, this I just wasn't expecting this going in. Sure, you expect sci-fi. You, you know, I I thought the whole angle of it was more of the translation end, like how how do we make contact with aliens like this? But gotcha. it, it plays into so much more of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it really makes it, it, it has some actually great philosophical uh, points to it with you. You got to think about language and, and, and how, um, you know, that affects your view of the world. Your and all perception. Kind of, your yeah. perception you know, of, your, of your reality and all that. So crazy, crazy stuff. I, I really like where that go, goes, especially towards the second half is when it really kind of ramps up. It's a movie that's not afraid to be a slow burn either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then to just build, 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 build and then yeah. finally release yeah. everything. Yeah. I will say I think it's a little high on our entropy list, but I, uh, I'm i not mad that it's that high. True. I still think it's great. Number five. Hit the top five here, ladies and gentlemen. Top five. Your name. Hey. So nice. with this, this, uh, this crack, the, the top five of just any list of uh, personal entropy lists, like if it wasn't just limited to the movies that we have on the entropy list. This is in my top ten personal movies okay. of all time, yes. Um, but that being said, my, my top, even though my, I have my top 10 movies all the time, they're not necessarily lining up with my entry list rankings kind mm. of thing. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, same thing here. Yeah. Uh, di- just different, different classifications for how I'm, I'm choosing these movies, but yeah, your name was, we said earlier, talk about a fucking sleeper, man. Like you, you showed me that movie. It was, it was by choice and and when i came over that night you handed me like four different movies mm-hmm. and then i don't know why i was just like i kept picking that one back up and something was telling me to watch it uh as if i had a dream <laughs> and and uh and i saw it coming yeah uh and so i'm so glad we put it on that night because i've watched that movie now i think close to 10 times in and since when you showed it to me in december yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was December God, or November. It was wasn't around it. there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's. I'm glad. I, I'll tell you what I'm glad about. I'm glad that you have two movies on in the top ten that were just kind of like, "Hey, sit down, and watch this." Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Um, and stuff you hadn't really heard of before too, which is kind of yeah part of the point of why we started this podcast. Sure, of course. Yeah, definitely part of what what we wanted to do here. Um, and then also following that up with the weathering with you, which mm. um. I still find so fascinating that my one friend liked Weathering With You more than Your Name because we showed him it in the other order. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure, we sure, sure. Weathering With You first yeah. and Your Name, and that shocked me because I think Your Name, story-wise, is just much better. Mm. Weathering With You is probably... I, it's hard, I have a hard time saying it's better animated because they're both so good. Yeah. But Weathering With You is still really, really like uh, just Your Name for me. It just hits home so, so hard because 
I've just always had such it, it connects for me because I just have such visual visceral dreams. I remember my dreams almost sure. every night. Yeah, and I'm so the same way. That that dreaming kind of thing for me is like that just kind of hit home a little bit harder as well as I love a good love story like that and that twist you just don't see coming at all. Yeah, and it's great. Because they, they do such a good – because when you think back to it, it's like why didn't they – how did they not know sooner? But, like, your first time watching it – You're you just have, caught up. You're just caught up. Yeah. You have no idea. You're just trying to keep up with what's going on because yeah. it's an anime. It's a little crazy. It's a little yeah, off place. Yeah, moves the at format. a breakneck pace. Yeah, it's, exactly. It, you're just um, trying to keep up and you don't kind of sit there and question it. And, and so rewatching it, you kind of keep that in mind. You got to keep you that, that looseness with it. But. Let me ask you this now. I, having seen it so many times, do you prefer the subbed or the dubbed version? I've only seen the dubbed – or I've only seen the subbed once. Okay. So I have to I'd have to give it a fair shake. Of the two, I liked the sub because it gave more detailed um Kind the, of breakdown of yeah, how detail everything of, works. What, of what's going on and how yeah. everything works, whereas the dub loses some of that yes. in the translation. Um and so it made the movie made even more sense to me with the sub. Yeah, it's funny. If, even though I've watched it like six times. The, the dub, dub is more ambiguous yeah. um in that way. Which is just a you know translation that's how it's the nature of it oh, yeah so I mean, you can't be mad at it for it it's but, true um they're both very very good the soundtrack incredible that's one i have yeah, gone Wiz. gone back to a few times outside the movie just put on the soundtrack mm. i just want to kind of listen to it so uh what number are you at? hey Moving on to number four welcome back blake okay oh hey guys are you good you're good uh number four django unchained Hey oh. Okay. This was we'll my f- actually my first watch when we did it on pod. Uh and this definitely shot up there for my Tarantinos. Uh it's it's probably not number one Tarantino for me though. And Glorious That's Bastards. Then Glorious Bastards and Once Upon a Time, like I mentioned earlier. Definitely edge this out for me, but I still think this is a lot of fun. DiCaprio, I think this is probably the best I've seen him, besides maybe Wolf Ooh. of Wall Street. Maybe Wolf of Wall Street. Fair enough. Yeah, I, you it's, seen, it's um, funny. DiCaprio, I just never I'm th- trying to blink on it. The Revenant. What's, uh, what's yes? Thank you. I I I, 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 I still think while he's amazing in The Revenant, I still feel like he had a better performance. You in Wolf of Wall Street. I think he deserved it more for Wolf of Wall Street. I genuinely think I might like him more in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I could definitely see that too because he's great in that one. Yeah, and, and it's hard. It, you know, these are all three great, probably some of the best performances of all time. Uh, yeah, all Leo's Leo's been throwing a heat, a hundred mile an hour heat on the black for the last yeah. like ten years yeah. or so. 10 <laughs> like, or Fifteen years, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, for me, Leo's the highlight of this, but Jamie Foxx kills it, and so does um, Christoph Waltz, and and Samuel yeah, Christoph Jackson Waltz. Too. Yeah, all four of them are just great, and the writing is it, it, to me this is some of the best Tarantino writing. I think. yeah, I think. Um, I do think part of the reason that I've soured on it is some of kind of like the language a little bit too, okay. and just knowing that it's written by Quentin and you know, yeah. a white dude from like sure. Hollywood. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little <laughs> heavy. So I mean, like uh, that, racial that yeah, that time and, I'm like you know separate work from art and, and art from the artist, but yeah. um, that is I think I, I, it's just hits a little bit weirder yeah, for me you, you, than I, now. Because I, even when I was watching, I had to keep that in the back of my mind, or that kept keep coming up in the back yeah. of my mind. I'm like. All right. Well, he's you know, at the end of the guy, day, like you like are the one putting pen to paper exactly, and writing yeah. these words down but, too. Like, you know, you're right. Separate the art from yeah. The it is. He, he's the, trying to make a point with it. It's in and it's no way in an endorsement mm, of like sure, anything yeah, on there. You no, you know you correct, can always correct, take it. And yeah. listeners, you're smart enough to know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But um, it is something that you know is worth talking about and is part of the conversation or surrounding film and, and criticism. You know, it's why we do what we do. Yeah. Moving on to the top three, the bronze medal. The bronze medal. This might be kind of controversial, but it's The Shining. Okay. okay. Um, it's not one or two for me. This is more on the spectrum of I respect it so much as a movie. Mm-hmm. I really, really like it. Honestly, I'll say I love it. But, like, there are movies I feel like, like Your Name, like, I enjoy watching more than sure. The Shining. But I, I, ha- I can't, in good conscience, put, put it above, above it. So that's that's where that, that's why this is so high. Even because if I lean more into the enjoyment aspect of it, it'd probably be a bit lower. Even though I do love it, uh, the music for me is honestly the highlight of this. The score where they they mm. they um, line up just so much so many of the sounds with the action on screen and so well, but also the directing and and, and Jack Nicholson's acting and uh, Sherry Duvall is that it? Shelley Shelley Duvall, um, all of them are great and and. Um, this is one that Scatman was Catman Crothers. Catman Crothers, yeah. <laughs> this is one again where 
I first time watching it on pod and I would love to rewatch it again with uh, my film class knowledge because mm. I, I feel like again I would get a, a greater meaning out of it uh, re- with a rewatch so that'll probably have to come around sometime soon yeah number two here hereditary wow yeah hey. Nice. hey I voted for hereditary number one on the entropy list you did. that's you true did. I yeah, do remember that I kind of had yeah. a and, realistic one and I, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. I said at the time, and I'll say it again. I, for movies, for me, are are there to evoke emotion out of the viewer, mm. and nothing evokes more emotion out of me than this movie. Have you seen Midsummer? Yeah. I've not yet. No, I've been mm. saving. I've been wanting to watch it, and I've had the opportunity to watch it, but I've actually been saving it to four pod. Four pod, actually, yeah. Mm. yeah. So whenever we get around to that, because I'm sure it probably will be this October, maybe when we do another horror. Yeah, that's not a bad call. Yeah, right. Uh, that's kind of what I've been preparing for. So, um, but Hereditary, I mean. <sighs> What more can you say about it, man? If you're looking for something to get emotion out of you, this one does it more than really anything else. Yeah, it's a roller coaster. It really grips you, like gets your claws it's in. It's so it funny go. because I just, I always remembered being there in 2013 and having The Conjuring come out and be like, uh, how how are R-rated horror movies, ghost stories, going to be more scary than this? Mm-hmm. And then this fucking guy just yeah. walks up on his first yeah, day for real. and just throws it down on the table. And I, know, I was man. just like, God damn damn it <laughs> yeah and the performances too the mother's performance in this is just yeah uh, tony yeah. Un, yeah, yeah un un tony Col- worthy man tony collette yeah she got unreal. robbed unreal <laughs> unreal yeah yeah right it's like horror movies in general get snubbed at the oscars they do what they are there's a long right. history of that yes yeah, yeah there is um yeah but that movie holy crap there's uh not much more to say about that one love it love it love it can we get the drum roll for the final one let's get it get it right this time here I thought there was. No? We're, we're, we're checking here, listeners. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. And the drums are appropriate because number one, of course, is Whiplash. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Uh, right at the same speed as Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> were you, Not were on you my tempo. tempo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The tempo or count or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, so this is, uh, I think this is the one that you and I might might be most different on Probably. Here, this is, uh, this was like your entry point into film as like kind of art form yeah a little bit this more came too. out in 2014 and i watched it, i believe in 2014 or 15 I, actually i think it was 2014 so you would have been in high school this would as have been this is hitting like eighth grade. yeah, yeah like, this was eighth grade we're hitting that like what am i going to do with my life very much in that sure. same kind yeah, of yeah, vein as miles yeah. teller character in this yeah dude exactly like what am i going to do with my life you know um i was in a lot of sports at the time and yeah, want to pursue passion. Yeah, over, exactly. Want yeah. to pursue, and which is still something I carry to this day because of this movie. Man. Mm. Um, very, very formative for me. It just hit me at the right age, and and I've I've just had a sweet spot for it and love it ever since. And I could honestly keep rewatching this movie and find more and more things to to, to love about it. And I've watched it now five, six times, I think. And I, every time I just watch it, I'm like, because when you watch it, when you when you have a favorite movie like this, where it's like not universally loved and it's not one mm. that everybody agrees with you on. It's kind of easy for me to like fall out of why I love it, and I and I kind of lose that a little bit. But sure. Every time I rewatch it, it goes right back to where it was. And I go, "Yep, number one, no question about it." For a favorite movie of all time, enough. every single time I watch it, it, it gets snaps back right there, and and I have no qualms uh, saying that or 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 stating that because I I just truly truly love this movie. Uh, you said the directing is kind of what fails falls flat for you on this, and for me, honestly, I disagree. The other way, I, I think the directing is great. I think, you know, he gets so much out of the actors. Both Miles Teller is amazing in this. Sure. But J.K. Simmons truly is. Um, yeah. And, and you, he knew exactly what he wanted. He wrote and directed this. He knew exactly what he wanted with the story. Well, it's based it. off his own short. Correct, yes. Beforehand, but he, right? Yes, yeah. but he, he, he wrote the full ad, 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 adaptation. True, true, true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he just he had a perfect vision for this. I feel like he executed great. I I think the, I like the I like the directing in this. I like the shot choice personally. And and when you rewatch it, you notice more and more things with how he chooses to do things. Uh, at least I I noticed as mm. as I keep rewatching. Um, and for me, this this is gonna it's gonna take a lot for to knock this off of my favorite movie of all time. Fair enough, because I just yeah. truly truly. Well, isn't it fun? Movie. We get to try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for all of us, really. For sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nice thing about. Awesome movies as they keep making them. Indeed, hopefully. <laughs> Did, uh, anything jumped up high or? or yeah, let me go through high. real quick here. Your uppers and your downers. My uppers and my downers. Um, Fast and Furious for Tokyo Drift is at eighteen. Hey oh. So I don't know okay. if, if that's uh, nice. if that's really 
too different. Um, Dr. Sleep is down at 29. That's one I know everyone here is pretty high on, but mm. that's a little bit lower for me. I think that movie's good, but not doesn't reach really good or, or great for me in any way, really. Sure. I think it's just, it's solid. I like it, but I, I don't love it. Uh, um, what else here? King of Staten Island up to 39 for me. Okay, yeah, I think that's um, kind of where I have it. Yeah. You're somewhere in there, too. Pretty, pretty high on that. Maybe not as high as that. I can't mm. remember. Ma Rainey's all the way down at 42. Yeah, I think that's one that all of us just... Chadwick really blew us away in that one, mm -hmm. and but kind of looking back on it, it is one that just, I don't know, his performance really is what stands out overall. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Everything else about that movie is kind of like eh for me, but I do really love his performance. Uh, 43 is The Descent right below Ma Rainey's. Mm. I'm still, I, I still really like that movie, and I totally understand, Blake, why you guys love it so much. But for me, it's just like, it doesn't it's not for me my favorite kind of horror Okay. And yeah, uh, I agree. And yeah, so more creature feature. Yeah, more creature feature. And um, the story for me was just kind of a little weird. So, but okay. but um, you know, over I still do like it. I just again don't love it. Sure. Um, and then the biggest upset of them all, I have Pan's Labyrinth all the way down at like forty eight. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, that. Wow. Yeah. It's, and that's a huge jump down from like it's like, I think it's like three on our entropy list. It is. It's just that's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler I, hasn't said anything in twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just really don't like love this movie a lot. I, I wow. like it. I mm. just it just I don't maybe it just missed for me. I'm not a huge. Um, I didn't watch a lot of these kind of movies as a kid. That kind of thing. Spanish. Not Spanish. <laughs> no. Uh, just like the uh, <laughs> no, like a creature kind of like monster fantasy. fairy. Yeah, yeah. Fantasy, fantasy fairy tale. Movie. I, I mean, I guess I didn't watch a lot of Spanish movies either, so I guess you can no, say that. I can't imagine they did. <laughs> no, I did not. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah well, that's just where where your love of World War II is. That's where sure. Tyler's and mine love of <laughs> okay. fantasy is. Yeah, I mean, if we have to go back to that scale of of um, good movie versus enjoyment, this is I can understand why you love it so much. Yours is just, you're fully on good just, movie, yeah. but you have no enjoyment. It, of it. It's not that I have no enjoyment; I just don't have a lot of it. Mm. So, and and I know you guys have both a lot of enjoyment and a, and think it's a great movie. I just only think it's a, it's a. I can understand why it's a great movie. And mm -hmm. and when I was going through cl film class, they talked a lot about this movie and what it does, and it's given me some more appreciation for it. But even then, I would have to rewatch and kind of renew my my think or my. As soon uh, as I find a printer, it. I'll get you my copy. Of my all right, all right. Send it my way. Send it my way. But you can, I could. Do I honestly probably need well. to like re-edit that. I haven't looked at it in five <laughs> years. It's probably full of shit. That was like, God, this is awful. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. I I can't look back at writing. Oh okay, yeah. Like, a little bit ago. Um, yeah, that's uh, my list there, the big notable ones. Uh, we are pushing the time limit here. Yeah, I think so. Um, I yeah. I was going to, I would would have loved to go through the IMDb list in its entirety. How about just big movers or, or big uppers that, and downers? I, I do have the highlights, so I'll okay. go through those, and then I, what I'll do, end up doing is I'll get, I guess I can go through and create another IMDb entry list for viewers to go see. And um, Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and then they can go see it on their own. Um Keeping this in mind uh, as we're going through here, there were some ones that were, were ties, and then I we usually tie break our entropy list with the IMDb list, but instead I tie broke the IMDb list with our entropy list. Got it. So any of that, our ties ended up going um, to the ones that were higher on our entropy list. So the notable mentions here, um, I can do. You want me to list off bottom five and top fifteen really quick? Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, uh, bottom five, uh, number sixty, Wonder Woman, nineteen forty eight. Oh, that's Fuck a different yeah. that, that movie doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, it's eighty four. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, fi uh fifty nine is F nine, which I find funny because it was our episode fifty nine was F nine. Hilarious. Ew. Yeah. Uh fifty eight American pickle. To okay. Blake's to Blake's uh that's so light. funny. Yeah, I, I had no we're, idea we're, we're it was gonna be that well. Yeah. I told well, you guys, I was close. going through cr uh, creating this entropy list with the IMDb rankings. I was actually very interested to see how this panned out. Yeah. But uh fifty seven, the purge. Mm. And then 56, Army of the Dead. Wow. It's interesting. I wonder, oh, like, I wonder over time if those move up or down. Like, because a lot of those, like, F9, Wonder Woman mm -hmm. 84, those, uh, those rankings Army will change Dead, over the years. Yeah, they're, they're very close to when they just released. Even American Pickle, too. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, and there's also some of those, too, that, like, 
like your Wonder Woman 84s or your your American Pickles or something like that. It, it does make me wonder if there is just people out there that are just like, you know, fuck women and Jewish people. Maybe. Like, like just yeah, sandbagging sure. them too, yeah. you know? There's a, there's a, there's probably more neo-Nazis out there on IMDb than you'd think. Could be. Could be their main messaging. But yeah. Actually, they probably I really remember, hate Green Room. I rem- probably no, genuinely. <laughs> I remember reading reviews for Green Room one time, like when I was, when it had just come out. And I remember there being a, a review on there that was like, or uh, it was like, because uh, you can add IMDb stuff to your like own list or something like that. And sure. someone was on there like, yeah, I really want to see this, but I'm afraid that it's like negative of the lifestyle, quote unquote. And like, does anyone know for sure? Are are the the uh, neo Nazis portrayed in a positive or negative light? And I was like, holy shit, they're they're out there on yeah, the internet. Yeah, they're real. Um, but yeah, scary. All right, uh, and then top fifteen here. Uh, fifteen is District Nine. Wow, that's okay. one. Yeah, that's one that's that's I think a little bit further down on my list yeah, than that, we had it yeah, earlier too. I'm not in love with that movie, but uh, yeah, high up there for for our list. Fourteen is Arrival. Mm, wow. Yeah, a little low. Uh, Thirteen, Kill Bill Volume Two. Interesting. Okay. Um, twelve. Twelve is Deadpool. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, it's funny that we were all nice very job. consistent on the bottom of the list, but now we're yeah, like right. to the top. We're all like, mm, yeah, interesting. I'm still, I'm I know this is uh, yeah. It's Tyler's so like Tyler's the common Ty- the common Ty- man. <laughs> clearly, Ty- apparently, uh, eleven is Soul, which none of us had it in our top fifteen. I remember I did put Soul higher than I thought it was going to be. Though. I did too. Yeah, yeah I, I put Soul a lot higher than we have it on our list. I think uh, ten is Kill Bill Volume Volume One. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Eight is, or sorry, uh, nine is Prisoners. You know, I'm honestly really happy that that is as well liked as it is. Because um, I feel like yeah. it's a movie, like, again, could be way lower than you would think it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to say that I have Prisoners at nine, but <laughs> but I have, but you have Prisoners <laughs> at nine. Uh, you didn't have eight at with Die Hard. That is one I think is actually a little low on our Classic. list sometimes, too. It, it is. Too. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. is. It's it's one weird. of those classic ones, you know. Um, Die Hard's dope. Die Hard is dope. Seven, Pan's Labyrinth. So that I guess mm. I'm way wrong on that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you haven't seen a lot of Spanish films, so. <laughs> 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 I've seen Ito Mama Tambien. Does that count? Uh, maybe. All right. We'll see. Uh, that's, that's pretty Mexican, actually. It's uh, very Mexican. I gotcha. Six, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, we have another one of your older brother's favorite movies. Yeah, that's uh, up ten spots from our entry list, which is it's at sixteen. Number five, not gonna say I had a number five. Your name, Ayo, Ayo, uh, which is a lot higher than I thought it was gonna be, but eight point four. Anime weebs really love Your Name. Who knows? It's it's a very popular movie. Yes, it is. Yeah, especially in Japan. Uh, Number four, Django. Yeah, I mean that that tracks. Yeah. Number three, The Shining. Wow. Not saying I had a number three, but I did. Number two, Whiplash. I could not disagree more hey, vehemently yeah. with well, this. <laughs> looks like uh, I get to say I'm right and you're wrong here, Nathaniel. A mm, little bit of sizzle. I'm just kidding. Yeah, There's no you're, you're right. right. There's no you're right, you're wrong. I'm just kidding. Um, awesome. But yeah, that, I'm, I'm hyped to see that. Glad to, glad to see that in number two. And then number one. Yeah. Is Inception up nine yeah. spots? Yeah, I remember Under Inception. Right. Unbeatable on IMDb. Yeah, yeah Inception, Inception famously was the number one IMDb movie for a long time. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, that was our quick uh, bottom five, top 15. Let's get to the highlights here really quick. Our biggest upticker, moving up spots. The uppers. The uppers. The Boondock Saints Jesus. moved up 34 spots. Uh, yeah. It was down at 53. It moved up to 19 on the IMDb list. All those older brother neo Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess all those Irish lads over there. In Boston. <laughs> Crazy. All, all of Boston. This. Yeah, just Boston is just like five Saints. stars. Five just stars. Boston. Yeah. Uh, the runner up for up ticker was Die Hard up 25 yeah, spots. All of our dad's favorite yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. And then the biggest down ticker was Tokyo Drift minus 29 spots. It's a, it's definitely a cult classic. Yes, yeah, and it, you gotta you gotta like that movie to, or like the Fast and Furious franchise to really like that movie because I know a lot of people don't. Uh, that was, let me try to, I'm trying to find it here. It's Twenty nine spots. Yeah, uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, on our list, twenty two, 
and sh- or IMDb list fifty three. Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty low. Uh, and then the runner up for down ticker was Hereditary, down twenty six spots in Green Room, tied also at twenty six. Both spots. controversial, both uh, in the horror genre, yeah. so not not too shocking. Yeah, I'm not too shocked yeah. just because they're not for everybody. Both of those, but um, both a shame because those are two deserve to be in the top ten. I agree. of this list. So, um, but yeah, those were the shocking ones. And then uh, I also did our most accurate. So w- I did within five spots. Oh, okay. So uh, moved up or down with five spots from our entry list. We have The Shining, Django, Your Name, Pan's Labyrinth, Prisoners, Dunkirk, Boys in the Hood, A Quiet Place, Frozen, The Conjuring 2, The Descent, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Trick or Treat, The Tomorrow War, Godzilla vs. Kong, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Project Power, The Purge, and An American Pickle. All of those were so within five spots. I was going to say, just yeah. counting, I think that's 20. Movies. 20 so out of 60. Not, yeah, it's not bad. 30, 33% hidden rate. For I'll four t- guys? For four guys, I'll take that. Yeah. One of them has a master's degree. The others look like idiots, you know. Yeah, Tyler, you've got to stop talking about your master's degree. It's crazy. <laughs> Killing it, bro. What a humble Killing brag. It. And then our least accurate movies. This was more than 15 spots up or down. Uh, we have. This will be fun. We have Die Hard, Soul, The Notebook, The Boondock Saints, Halloween, a Quiet Place Part 2, Wonder Woman, Hereditary, The King of Staten Island, Green Room, Halloween 2018, The Strangers, Tokyo Drift, and Army of the Dead. Those were all of our biggest misses. You uh, know, according to according to IMDb. I stand by our we, entropy list. We've I do too. Talk, I, we've been talking about it. I've been going through it. We've been talking about it all episode. I think, uh, I think our entropy list is a good mix for I us. I would definitely agree. Um, that was fun though. I like the, I do like the, uh, yeah, I was thinking we should do this every year just with the movies that we do, uh, like over the year, over the year instead of a, the biggest ones. Yeah. Maybe we can do a biggest one special every now and then. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Maybe but, every uh, few years, uh, an extra every 10 years. Oh, yeah. okay. But I mean, well. that, that is technically what the interview <laughs> list is kind of for too yes, yes. as well. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun to kind of do the the year's movies over. Again. Yeah. And, uh, I also want to take some time to reflect on one fucking year guys. Yeah, uh, we way did to go a, team. We did a little bit of this Congrats, in episode Ellis. sixty, but uh, that's awesome. I'm really, I'm really proud of us. I mean, I, I, it's not that I didn't think we'd get to one year, but it was just like, okay, we'll start this and see what happens, right? Know? And uh, we all stuck with it. It was there. We've never really had a discussion of do we want to stop? Do we want to keep going? It's always just been all right. What well, we're watching next week, and um, you know, our, I said I mentioned before how like. Our views aren't like amazing, like you know. For, but for starting with, for doing this for a year, I'm so pleased with what we've we've seen over this past year. And I really, really want to thank every single person who's listened, either from episode, just checked out episode one to has listened to every episode to Maricela who binged every episode in three months. Like true, yeah. big shout out. I yeah, like great sunglasses. Great. <laughs> Does she have some great sunglasses? Yeah, it's barn dance reference. Uh, you had okay. to be there. I had to be there. My bad. <laughs> Two turn tie and uh, bar dance and Daniel. Um, but yeah, I mean, every single person that's listened, this is uh, I've listened to podcasts since I was thirteen. This is always something I've wanted to do, and mm. I'm you know I'm glad that we've been able to do it. Been to I'm glad we've been able to do it with the level of success we've had because I really didn't know if this was going to get anything, and to see that we've gotten some support and to see that there's promise maybe for some future growth. Is I, I can't believe there's five people that listen to yeah, us, let alone too. the fact that we have <laughs> we have four thousand downloads on sixty yeah, episodes, like over four thousand <laughs> yeah. plus whatever uh, whatever YouTube views we have. I mean, that's not a lot, but I'll take them. Like, I'm. Very pleased with how this has turned out within a year. Uh, we'll have to see where this uh, where this goes forward. Well, we did, uh, you know, we were cursed by that mummy, so we are just stuck here for forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not understanding this reference. You don't remember that time we were we were digging around at Best Buy and it was just hanging out in the compactor. There was that mummy coffin, and we opened it up, and it said, "You can't. You're you're now cursed to forever I do podcasts." Think- <laughs> I must have not been there for this. Yeah. Oh, well, Tyler and I were there. <laughs> okay. Blake was there too. I'm pretty sure you were there. True story. It was a real thing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Our eyes split into two different pupils. It was crazy. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys have anything you guys want to add to that? Uh, we, as you kind of talked about last week, um, it, like we said earlier, I, I'm thankful for each and every download that we get i can't believe that we get to just do this and hang out and people actually listen so 
God, think of how unsufferable I would be if I didn't have this outlet. Yeah, this really <laughs> helped in the second half of quarantine. Um, it was it was fun having yeah. something to look forward to every week. Really helped. Mm. And, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, same here as as we kind of harped on before. Thanks for everybody for listening, and rather you tell a friend, tell a mom, sister, sibling, significant other, um, friend. That's that's awesome, man. It, it goes a long way, and um, we'll continue to do this. It's our outlet of sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, discussing movies, because this is all we did when we worked together for, was that, two and a half years? Or and something? it genuinely felt weird that we were off last week, too. I yeah, was like, man, I haven't seen the boys. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, yeah. Definitely. I mean, when you do 51 so. out of 52 episodes or weeks, it's like, well, shit. Yeah, it's been great to be able to just stay connected with each other, yeah. too, in, oh, a, in a way when we never definitely. expected it. So I'm sorry, Blake, I'm talking over you again, as usual. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. No, no, definitely. You're, you're definitely right. That's... That's all I had to say. Cool. Ty, you got anything to add? Or you, uh... Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we say it every week, and uh, it, it's pretty crazy to see that we've done something like this for an entire year and been able to enjoy it and, you know, get the feedback that we get from each other and our listeners, and it's it's really cool to see us grow. And who knows, whatever this might be, we might just do it for eternity and have a 10-year reunion and, you know, just what the mummy said fun with it <laughs> and you know uh, it might become something really cool but who knows who cares at this point i'm just having a good time and i love you guys and this has been a really big thing for me and uh i appreciate you three but uh i also appreciate everybody that you know tunes in every week and puts up with our bullshit and welcome so, yeah. to the squadron anytime <laughs> <laughs> yes sir Cool. Well, uh, I don't want to keep the listeners here too much longer. We are pushing two hours here, guys. So uh, without a further ado, we guys, uh, we do have episode 62 out. Uh, that sounds right. It's going to go out at the same time as this. It's Black Widow, our first Marvel MCU movie. Uh, oh, that's that's the Wonder Woman. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I was trying to go for the wrong, Black Widow theme. Wrong, right? empowering female superhero. Different Is universe, man. Man, bit of sizzle. We'll bit see. Of, bit of sizzle. Maybe there's a, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to say this. Loki spoilers. Um, <laughs> yeah, so join us next week for that. Hope you guys have watched that or are planning to watch it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be our B. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, be excellent to each other, everyone. And we'll be our B. Thanks for uh, stopping by. I don't want to basically repeat everything I just said, but uh, I'll repeat it again tomorrow. So uh, we'll be our B. <laughs> Yeah, I'll call sign Ty. Um, it's late here. It's about 11 p.m. So um, thanks, for everybody, for listening. Um, we'll, we'll tune in for next episode of Black Widow. We'll be RB. Blake, why are you in Milwaukee? Uh, Bucks, man. Oh, well, I was going to ask you if you went. If you went to, we're going to go to one of those games because remember you talking about it last year, yeah. the year before, or last time there was a season you could go to, and the Bucks yeah, were in man. it. You were talking about trying to get tickets and stuff. So yeah, they played in Phoenix though, so I didn't go to the game. Oh, okay. um, but obviously that whole area though, there's just a ton of stuff, and I got two buddies from college from uh, Wisconsin, from the Milwaukee area. So oh, okay. I saw them. So we just kind of chilled at like a sports bar out there. Um, but it, I mean, it was dope. There's a shit ton of people. They won the game. They're a game away from winning the the championship now. Sure. So they went up three two. But uh, yeah, it was it was fun, dude. Got to see some buddies I've, I haven't seen in a minute. So are you definitely going with the with the Bucks there as your as your team? Ah, uh, I mean, I was. Kind of that guy, like cheering for the Suns. Sure, like, that jackass. You know I mean, like, I, somebody had to play that role. Uh, but yeah, truthfully, it doesn't matter to me. I'm out. Sure. Are you a Suns fan by chance? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I, yeah, if I kind of root for anyone, I'll, I'll root for the Suns. They've just been so shitty for so long that it's yeah. kind of like. <laughs> and basketball was never really my sport, anyways. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah, if if they're in something, I'll definitely. They'll be my go-to team to root for, for sure. Like, right. 
out of the out the gate. If you had to give a give a team you root for in the NBA, you'd say that one basically. Yeah, I'd just yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, Arizona, yeah, so Arizona the Suns, yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, growing up, obviously, it was like my, the Bulls were the only team that I knew, mm-hmm. basically, from Space Jam, yeah, you know, and that's sure. like, it was that. And then I think, you know, I had a couple friends that were really big Lakers fans. You get a lot of L.A. fans in, in oh, Arizona, sure. too, obviously. Yeah, I think of that. Um, Definitely. My fan, I, get, I mean, I guess I was born in Sacramento, so I could go for the Kings. Oh, they're worse than the fucking sun. <laughs> <laughs> they're bad. Dude. I thought what they were good a few years ago. This- yeah, the Suns were really bad though to this year. Oh yeah, to be honest, like kind of out of nowhere. It's kind of like so yeah, they got the Kings is probably comparable. They got hot during the uh, during the bubble last year, wasn't yeah. that kind of the thing? And then they just kind of been rolling with that momentum ever since. Yep, somehow, some way. That's fun. 